Oh, Icewind Dale. Freezing wind sweeps across the tundra, ceaselessly battering anything that dares to grow or breathe in its domain. Even in summer, when the days stretch into intermit wow, intermittently long, the sun blazing low in the midday midnight sky brings no respite from the chill. Without fail, the wind finds its way through every chink and crack, every opening in the warmest furs, every tent flap, every roof and board of the strongest homes. It drains away any hint of warmth wherever it finds purchase. The threat of winter's fury is never far away. The wind sweeping down from the rugged glaciers howls its wrath and sometimes carries stinging sprays of ice in its grasp. The sun never rises far from the, above the horizon, even at the height of summer, and the height of summer is fleeting. During the rest of the year, sudden storm bringing driving hail or sleets that leave everything coated in a sheath of ice, or they bring snow that piles in deep drifts. All this cold and fury is caged into one small region. The ice, ice cliffs of the ragged glacier, the source of the never-ending wind, rise up in the east like prison walls, home to white dragons and enormous remorazes. In the south loom the snow-capped peaks of the spine of the world, crawling with orcs, goblins, and other monsters. North and west the sea of moving ice churns, bergs, and flows. In the endless tumult, like winter grinding its teeth in anticipation of its next freezing assault. And yet, such is the nature of life that even in this hostile place, it manages to lift its head in defiance of the biting cold. Lichens cling to weathered rock despite the battering of the winds providing sustenance to herds of reindeer through the winter. Fish swim in the lakes and rivers that dot the tundra. When summer comes to the tundra, life shakes off the topor of winter and comes forth in full flower. Grasses grow two or three feet high in the span of weeks. Birds flock to the marshes formed in the thawing soil. Reindeer, reindeer calves fill out the herds that have been diminished through the winter. Of course, no region of the Forgotten Realms is without its people. Human tribes follow the reindeer herds through their animal mi annual migrations. Other humans dare the treacherous waters of the sea of moving ice in search of fish, seals, and whales to sustain them. Dwarves dig into the earth to find shelter from the biting wind, mining for iron and forging weapons and armor. Most improbably, most improbably of all, civilized folk descended from foolhardy and treasure-mad immigrants Form the south managed from the south manage to survive and sometimes thrive in ten small towns. The wooden buildings of these towns provide only a little shelter for the from the cold and the wind. No protection at all from the attacks of orcs, barbarians, or the fierce tundra yeti. Though the towns are clustered around three icy lakes, teeming with knucklehead trout, resources are scarce, and competition between neighboring communities can be fierce and occasionally deadly. But for all the dangers, people still live in the region known as Ten Towns, and new arrivals, outcasts, fugitives, wanderers, and adventurers still come to test themselves against the hardest environment known to the world. This is Icewind Dale. Now, in terms of each of you, you each had a reason for heading north. Each of you are destined for some kind of greatness. I'm going to start, I'm going to go in the list of the way that the names pop up, which is weirdly not alphabetical. Uh, we're going to have Orion Snowborn. If you can, I would like to see everybody deafen themselves, except for uh, Orion Snowborn. So yes, I'm Orion. I've been uh, hold on, hold on in these second, areas. Orion. Okay. Uh, Jay and... Perry, I need you to actually deafen. There's uh, the little headphones. Oh. Okay. Hey, <laughs> All right. So, as you each have your reasons for heading north, you each have mandate to make your way to this place called Ten Towns in Icewind Dale. Um, now, one thing that everybody has learned of and everybody has passed through Luskin has heard this the standing rumor or fact I'm not really sure what it is that up until recently the last caravan that you're all taking to go north was cancelled there wasn't actually going to be a caravan heading north 
and it seems like some powers that be decided that this caravan needed to get pushed through so come hell or high water it was given over that it would go to the ten towns uh, much to the chagrin of the caravan master that said you all find yourselves on a journey that should take around 21 days meals um, and protection from the elements will be provided during the journey uh, but you all will have the appropriate gear necessary knowing the the harsh winters that have been um, plaguing the north lately uh, go ahead and actually transfer you guys to this map here so where you find yourselves heading out from is here all the way down in Luskin and you've learned that some interesting problems have been arising down there. Uh, give me just a second to turn down that wind. It was fine. Okay, I'm turning it down for me though because it was a little out of my ears. Um, as you guys made your way along the northern means across the ice flow river um, and heading ever closer to Hundlestone. Um, the journey seems to stretch. What should have been about a 10 day to 15 day journey just to get to Hundlestone turns into around a 20 day journey just to get to Hundlestone. Around the 21st day as you finally make your way onto the 10 trails, the storms of the winter um, that seems to have come early to Icewind Dale close in all around you. And you hear rumors and whispers of multiple ca caravan drivers saying, are we going to make the pass? I don't know. This is the worst it's ever been. I've never made a, I've never made a drive to 10 towns in this kind of weather. Um, the rumors desist and you hear the gruff but sturdy caravan driver who seems to be a hardy looking dwarf with uh, dark brown uh, beard and uh, just li little bits of uh, gold and uh, gem interlaced into his beard. Um, s roughly say, move along, we got this, and just keep pushing and pushing. Um, by the 26th day, you manage to get to the north, uh, what's called the North South Pass and you're now here and it's brutal um the snow is deep at this point you're you're looking at three to four feet deep snow where they've got teams of guards who are normally there for protection actually heading up in front of the caravan just to tr shovel and dig out the snow so that the caravan wagons can make it through the snow but you do manage to push through and it takes you what looks like another three days, which should have been about a day journey just to get through the pass was actually three. Um, more rumors sustain or subsist and say, are we going to have enough food? Are we even going to make it? Um, the journey though, despite the weather was quiet. Um, this kind of weather, especially in this place, this pass where they have stop points, uh, on either side of the pass for resupply and shelter you you're used to hearing attacks happen whether it be crag cats or yetis but nothing um whatever whatever divine blessing you have has protected and sheltered your caravan all the way to 10 towns and you see for the first time the wind starts start to die down and the sun peek out just ever so slightly from behind the clouds. And as you see the sun clear just for a second, it, it, I swear it feels but a moment. You feel the warmth hit your face and you see smiles across all of the, all of the people present on this caravan, which is very large. Um, as you can see in the distance, the gates of Bryn Shander. Um, the most one of the biggest cities in all of the ten towns is looming large in front of you and as you get closer obviously the sunshine doesn't last and it quickly fades back behind cloud cover 
and uh, a snowstorm starts to brew, brew and blow in, and the wind picks up even worse. And before you know it, you seeing the caravans, the gates are wide open. You see smiling faces of Bryn Shanders, uh, people greeting you as you make your way in. You guys hear off in the distance some faint call of, Yeti attack! Get the wagons behind the wall! And that's where we're going to pick up, is you guys at the gates of Bryn Shander. Okay. As the storm is blowing in, you hear, you can't see because the snow is actually limiting your vision. You can't see more than about 15 feet out, but you hear the Yeti uh, attack and it seems like they've climbed over the walls and are now somewhere inside of the city. And with that, uh, the Yetis get to move first. And um, let's see here. Can you change me to a 14? It's not a 23. Who's that Perry? Yeah, that's Levi. Perry, you can't just roll until you get above the DM. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Levi, what is your um, what is your dexterity modifier? Three. Uh, dexterity modifier is three. And what's your dexterity oh, score? Uh, 17. And Orion? Uh, I'm a 4. I'm a 19. 19, okay. Ooh. So, Orion gets to go first. Um, you guys watch as these creatures seem to emerge out of nothing. Um, coming out of the snow. Let me just verify their speed. Yeah. So, grab these guys. Five. So they get to about here and they just start to come you just start to see some of them coming into distance and into view but um, I, don't see I know anything. I know I'm moving okay. into the layer so you can see them and then you watch oh. as one large one okay uh, seems to start to come into distance into view um, keeping in mind anyone who rolls with um, weapons that are ranged, are going to be at disadvantage unless the creatures are within 15 feet distance of you. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, and <laughs> this year that would change. Right. Uh, so with that, uh, that was their turn. And you watch actually as these four are going to double move. Uh, I'm going to get them to here. And then this one's going to go... Right there. There. Mm. Oh, hi. There. hi there. Yeah, they're double moving, so they can close the distance. And that one gets to there. And then this one going to go right here. And that is their turn. And next up is Arana. Um, I apologize for my brain fart. How 20 foot cube? Is it 20 foot across? Like that? 20 foot cube would be, yeah, it would be 20 feet to all size. Okay. And it goes 20 feet in the air. Could I make it like that and get all five of them? Uh, yeah, you could center it. If, if the cube is touching them, they're going to have to make a save. I think the only okay. one that might be safe from it would be this one. Which I didn't mean to mark the map, but when you moved away no not that one um he was right there right this one yeah mm -hmm. i mean i can Orange. redo it like that to where okay. they're yeah. all touched yeah then yeah as long as you want to touch as long as they're in, in contact with your um your uh, okay. book yeah you're good then. um i'm gonna grab my druidic focus that i have not really decided what it is yet and cast fairy fire awesome okay so those are the two that are marked by your cut okay. by your fairy fire um, um and is that your turn 5 10 15 20 25 30 run away <laughs> <laughs> zz looks behind him like where'd you go <laughs> yeah, I'm, i looked at I'm, z to see 
Yeah, I did what I could to make it easier on y'all to hit him, but uh, it's a concentration spell. No worries. Okay, mm-hmm. with that, Orion, it is your turn. I'm sorry. Uh, do you have a specific um, marker um, that you want for concentration? I put the wrench. But I don't know if you. You're good. I got. I, there's one I was gonna do. Okay. Generally, I, I don't mind putting it myself. Just tell me. Okay. The timer. The time clock. Yeah, okay. I did. I did that though. Um, okay. So Ryan, uh, did you? Does this have any extra height in the wagon or anything like that? Uh. Can I, in a sense, if I'm here, can I shoot over? You you could shoot over. The height. The wagons are standing about five feet off the ground. Be, okay. Keep in mind, though, that you are within its melee distance, the small yeti in front of you. Oh, move, yeah, n- technically. Oh, okay. yeah, I gotcha. But you could gotcha. shoot oh, over gotcha. its head to hit the big one in the back if you wanted to. Gotcha. Yeah, I wasn't sure, uh, like, if the height had any value. Okay, so it's only five feet, so it's not nothing that major. Yeah. Um, actually... Which one are you attacking there? Well, I, that's what I'm like. I don't know what the fairy fire does. That's the only thing I would... It gives it. advantage. Oh, that- Gives yeah. advantage to any weapon attack. It also oh, gives them a ten foot lit radius that sheds dim light, making them easier to spot in this snow. You're seeing mm-hmm. green beacons, uh, so like if they were to disappear in the snow, there'd be a green beacon leading the way. Gotcha. And uh, since for sneak attack, I need advantage. This would count for that, I assume, right? Correct. You need advantage or to be attacking a yeti that an ally is in combat with. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And I get You're welcome. <laughs> Dude, your the your fairy fire is gonna be Levi's best friend. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, well, then I'll check. Like Roderick's wall, of course. Right. Uh, <laughs> I guess I might as well then go for the guy right in front of me. Uh, then, cause then I can have my brother handle the other. Should I t- turn off the global attack modifier, or is that what gonna is, happen anytime? What is? I'm it? just gonna do a short sword against the uh, guy right The global right attack me. modifier that you have should be for your uh, sharpshooter ability. Okay. Um, so, so it won't it would happen. Not, it won't work on short sword. It only works on ranged attacks. I just want to make sure it wasn't part of the calculations when I when I roll for the attack. Uh, it, so, all right, I'll do short sword attack against a uh, green right in front of me. Yep. Yeah. You have advantage since uh, Levi is uh, in contact with it. Yep. Yeah. Then twenty five uh, is and, definitely going to hit, but you can roll the second one to see if it does more. Possibly crits. Uh, Wait, why does he have advantage? Because you're in contact with it, and there's oh, your crit. There you go. So, <laughs> and crit. Yep, so that one hits. Go ahead and roll with the second one that you rolled. The damage. Wonderful. And that is. So, yeah, the sharpshooter damage would not be applied. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have to turn that one off, too. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's why. So. Yeah, I had, uh, there was two sharpshooter yeah, uh, global sorry. modifiers. Yeah. Um, but so that's an that's 11 damage. You watch as um, Orion wades in on this thing, harrying it from on high, and you just see like a flurry of cuts coming in, and this thing just starts to see uh, what was a perfectly white fur coat turns muddled with red coloration, and it just starts to bleed from like what looks like 15 or 20 cuts on its face. Um, it is not looking good. All right. Um, do you have a secondary, like another short sword or dagger? Uh, I have a hand axe. Is that classified as a light weapon? Uh, I'd have to check it. Because I think so. And if it is, then you would absolutely be able to make a second offhand attack. You just don't get your proficiency bonus with it. Yeah, it's light range thrown. Yeah. So, So, yeah, you can throw or you can attack with it. And just um, keep in mind, it's still advantage. So if you want to toggle to advantage for right now. Oh, yeah, I got to toggle it. That's right. Yeah, no oh, worries. <clears throat> oh, that's right. It just makes it easier. And then you're yeah. rolling this without without proficiency. So it would be 13, so 11 to hit the second Yeti. And as you do, it manages, it looks like um, after uh, reeling from the attack, it manages to take almost like a knee as you take the axe to the swing and just manages to go right over its head. Oh, man. Um, and is that your turn, or are you going to move? Well, because he can still take a swipe at me. Correct. Uh, I, I'll i be... I'll stay where I'm at. Uh, okay. That way I can help uh, 
if Levi wants to do anything. Okay. But I think he's going for the other guy. Okay, and Levi, it is your turn. Yep. Yes, well, I have a rapier and a dagger, and I'd like to... I uh, want to thrust both into the green yeti's hide okay, with a so cackle. Okay, so go ahead and make your first attack. So, advantage. Yep. Uh, 22 is definitely going to hit with the rapier. Are you adding, before you roll, are you adding your sneak attack? To the well, yes. Okay, go for it. So wait, do I need to click on it? Oh, yeah, yes. click your okay. sneak attack for the first one. You'll have to unclick it for the second attack. So you did 15 points of damage as you watch as uh, Levi does like a running uh, running start and runs up the thing, jumps off its knee, and then like buries this rapier all the way up to the hilt into this thing's eye and then draws it out and you watch as it collapses to the ground, uh, unmoving. Damn. Um, and you still have your dagger. Yeah, while still looking at the uh, green Yeti's corpse without looking at the red, I I thrust the dagger behind me. Okay, still have advantage. Okay, no sneak attack, advantage. Now, can I just click on the dagger, or is there, yeah. because of the yeah. fact that it's an offhand, is there anything less damage? Uh, you would, you just lose your proficiency, but a crit's still going to hurt. It's still 23. <laughs> so go ahead and roll uh, damage. You also don't get your modifier to your damage. So we'll just subtract it, but go ahead and roll. With, and subtract. So I have a, a two, so it's just minus two for damage, right? Because yeah. that's my proficiency. That would be minus, apparently, uh, three, because that's your dexterity modifier. It's your, your your modifier that goes on to your damage. So you got four points of extra damage on green. As you watch as this one takes the cut, as you seem to plung, plunge it like into what looks like its lung area, and its coat starts to turn red as well. Okay. Uh, is that your turn? Or are you going to move? Lastly, I just uh, I kind of cast a quick glance at Orion, kind of with a look of it's been a long time, and that's it. And okay then, uh, Obed, you're up. So I am ducking down behind the uh, paltry, I guess the side of the wagon, whatever paltry cover that's giving me, but mm -hmm. I uh, want to try and cast Minor Illusion. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to attempt to do is make this Yeti think that there is, that the cavalry has arrived, hoping that seeing one of their brethren dying and a second severely wounded that if i can scare them enough they might just ski daddle so okay um nice. i'm going to try and make it sound as though there is cavalry coming from our direction uh I'm trying to see how to click on the map sorry one second click and hold but is basically how you ping. It, sorry good clicking and holding is a ping so you can ping where you want yeah, so I want to make it sound like there's cavalry coming from this direction. Okay. Yes. And then hopefully see if they will start to run the other direction. Okay. So what do you? What kind of sound effect are you going for? Like, like, like you say, beats. like so, just like hoof beats or like boots stomping on the ground. Um, if if I can, hoof beats with like clanking of armor, you know, kind of like uh, the whole shebang. Okay. Uh, DC's thirteen. And okay. my attack bonus is five. Okay. Um, well, that's your action. You've got a bonus and a move now. So you get to you'll have to wait to see if it did anything or not. Okay. Yeah, I'm just hunkering down in the wagon. I don't know what else to do, so we'll see no if, if my uh phantom see. cavalry does the job. So uh <laughs> you uh ZZ, you you like you're wondering where Arana ran off to, and then you start hearing this like weird, strange muttering and a flash almost from behind you and then you just hear like the sound of like stomping boots charging forward and you start to get the impression that possibly there might be some cavalry coming some town guard or somebody right. trying to help and where is it i'm so sorry where it's it coming from it's coming from somewhere over in this direction you don't see it you just hear it from the other side of the wagon oh sorry my turn order was covering it i was like where <laughs> yeah back over here <laughs> thank uh, you and uh with that zz it's your turn you have two of these cute man-sized yetis standing in front of you with a large one looming in the background. I will hear the hoofbeats behind me and I will say, yeah, and I will run screaming at the first one. Okay. Um, 
and I will uh, drop my shield so I can two fist my you battle can, axe. Okay, I was gonna say you could always throw it onto your back too. Oh, uh, sorry, I thought. Okay. I yeah, will, it's up like, to you how if box. you want to leave it behind you so you can't use it again because you're you've got your axe and your shield in your hands and you're like, okay, well I don't need this thing right now. <laughs> yeah, I will hook it onto my back then. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah. And I will go. Boop. <laughs> right. <laughs> and make my normal attack. <laughs> yep. <laughs> With my two-handed, and I'm just gonna roll. We'll see what happens. Not enough. <laughs> uh, so you come flying in and swing um, wildly at this thing, and your sense of depth perception, like, you're used to fighting in normal conditions, and this wind and snow is blinding you so badly that it's screwing up your only good eye, and you're having a hard time just finding it as this yeti seems to dance out of the way of your swings. It's just flailing it wildly. Whoosh! Okay, with that... Cursing that alar um, uh, Arana, Arana did not make the one in front of me glowy. I'm just like, of course it's the one further away. <laughs> <laughs> With that, it is the Yeti's turn. And uh, this Yeti is going to slide over here and swing at uh, Levi with its claw attack. Did we see if like they were intimidated at all? It appears that, um, and Obed, since you're hiding, you don't see it. Right. And everybody just heard the sounds of hoofbeat. Orion and Arana, you both looked at, at the source of where this sound came from, but saw nothing. And it doesn't appear that any of these were shaken, that it seemed like they were too focused on the conflict at hand. Right. But the sound is still going because it lasts for a minute, right? Yeah, it's still going. It's just okay. a re uh, it's like an endless repeat. And it's after like a, a little, like after like a. Solo. What's that? It's like a Neil Pert drum solo. Yeah, but after like the first six seconds, it sounds like you're hearing it repeating, and you're like, it's on loop. Damn it! Um, can you can you turn it down? Can you turn it down? I want to focus. Uh, the first yeti. Okay, the first yeti sees you, Levi, and it's going to try and overpower you and grapple you. I need you to make either an athletics or an acrobatics check to resist. Okay. Oops, hold on. Well, I guess so an eight. eight was the first one. So yeah. uh, it looks like uh, you try to duck out of the way, but the Yeti manages to grab onto you, and it's now holding you in place. Mm -hmm. um, and you just see this gaping maw with sli like just drool and saliva coming out of its mouth and these teeth that are just sharp as shit looking down on you. Um that's its turn. The one in front of you is going to go ahead and try and grapple you, uh, ZZ. Okay. Go ahead and make and so a, yep. Athletics acrobatics. or acrobatics, yep. Well. Whatever your strongest at. They're, I think the same, but I am proficient in one, so I will go with athletics. Okay. Um, same role. You... <laughs> You manage, you manage to duck out of the way of his claws as he reaches in and grabs you, and you just like shrug him off, and you could feel like his strength was there, and it was almost like he almost had a good grip on you, but he couldn't get his claws in fast enough for you to pull away. And Not the today, throw rug. And the other one is gonna move in and attack you straight up with his claw attack. Uh, that is, oh, uh, that's not going to hit. Seven to hit. Nope. Okay, um, and the last one moves up and sees, uh, the one who did this, like, massive amount of damage and is going to move over and attack you, Orion. Oh, Um, and he's going to come at you with two claw attacks. That is a 23 to hit. Uh, yeah, that would hit. Yeah, For would eight hit. points of slashing damage. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, good. Wow. And his second attack? Uh, okay. 13 to hit. Oh, phew. No. I'm oh, good. that's good, because he would have been grappled after that. Um, So he watches. He comes in and just with his giant gaping clawed hand just swings once and leaves a scrape across your chest that leaves deep wounds and blood just pouring from your chest. And he roars in your face, like, gleefully almost as he's coming in for a second swipe. 
only to miss the second swipe as you manage to somehow duck and tumble out of the way of the swing. Um, well, ZZ seemed cool. I mean, it's too bad he's leaving us so soon. <laughs> what? You mean, a, you mean a Ryan? That's what I meant, obviously. Yeah. Um, I was so, like, what do you know? Arana, it's your <laughs> turn. Yeah. Um, Arana... I need a mental refresher. I... Uh, can I do two cantrips in one turn? They have to be a one has to be a bonus action cantrip. Okay, good. Um, I'll cast Shillelagh bonus action on my uh, da, 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 da. staff. You wouldn't be walking quarter staff. My, yeah, my quarter staff. Mm-hmm. And then I will cast Produce Flame. Oh, fucking hell. Produce Flame. Mm-hmm. Are you throwing and, it as well? No, I just meant to cast it. Okay, I was so you're casting. Hold it. You're casting. Can I. Flame. Can I cast it and no, because I it takes an action to cast it, so I, it would be. Never mind. I I'm still gonna cast it. I was just gonna like if there's like one that starts to come toward me, I was gonna let it go. And yeah, aim at you them. can Um. Yeah, I can't no, do that on this your turn. Action, your act, yeah, you're using your action to produce the flame. So now you've got this like small ball of fire levitating just off of your hand and Mm -hmm. held held out in front of you and the one here in front of ZZ happens to catch the glimpse of the flickers of fire Um, oh shit and this one here catches the glimpses of that fire out of the corner of its eye with its passive perceptions as well as no that one's not it's too blocked same with the other one okay so that's so you see these two here see the fire Mm -hmm. The two unmarked by fairy fire or seeing fire. Okay. Is that your turn then? Yep. You... <laughs> uh, okay. Right. That was an interesting move. I'm just going to run into the snow and be like, I Orion, it's your turn. Great. Uh, all right. Good start. Um... And are the um, wagons moving? At all during this six the seconds, horses, the the, ra- the, ho- the horses are all basically um, being pulled under control, and it's very difficult as the um, caravan drivers are having a hard time getting the horses back under control to drive them into the into the uh, town. Got it. And I am totally using them as a way to avoid the yetis. So it's sort of like in a horror movie where the monsters are coming and you're at the car box with the key and you're just like, pretty much. You're going to flood it. I desperately try and unlock the door. Okay. So what are you doing, Ryan? All right. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Because if I walk away, he'll take a swipe at me. So I guess I'll disengage. Oh, cool. oh, is that an action? It's an action then... to do. They get a free attack, though. No, disengage allows you to move in and out of any enemy's uh, thing, unless unless they have something that specifically states otherwise, like that they can okay. counteract disengage. And what does dodge do? Dodge gives them gives them any enemy attacking you disadvantage. Thank you. Oh yeah. Um. Well. Do we see any townspeople or any, like, guards at that gate? You see guards inside the town, Orion, and it looks like they're also dealing with uh, some yetis of their own. Oh, great. So what you're dealing with is a small contingent of what is attacking this caravan. Um, There's yetis fighting further down and further inside, like they climbed over the walls. Um, gotcha. And are being uh, defend, like fought off by the uh, town guard in Bryn Shander, as well as the caravan guard that's dealing with yetis further down the line. Well, he's going to chase after me no matter what. So Possibly. I might pretty much try and end up here. Okay. And then... so you climb down and you go towards the gates trying to get these caravans, uh, the wagons, to start moving their way in. Yep. Okay. I'd say I'd, and you can definitely mad. still see the big yeti that hit you looming over the top of the wagon. Like, it's taller than these wagons are. And these are okay, covered gotcha. wagons. <laughs> like, uh, this thing's so, standing like 10, 12 feet tall. And so for the 
When it's a bonus action, it's fine to do the healing potion? Yeah, you can absolutely drink a potion of healing if you'd like as a bonus action. Okay. And then to I'll administer to it somebody else would be an action. Okay, gotcha. I'll do that real quick for myself. Cause yeah, no worries. Go ahead and there should be a little button on there that you can click. There you go. Ooh, well done. Wow. So you're back up all the damage you took. All right. Well done. <laughs> um, is that your turn? Uh, yeah, that'll be my turn. Okay. Levi, what are you doing? So I assume breaking hold is an action. Uh, yes, it, you'll basically be making a acrobatics or athletics check to break the grip that the Yeti has on you. All right. I'm going to try and... Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to try and squiggle. Okay, so you around. wouldn't have had advantage, but All I'm going right, to guess that you beat it. it. Yeah, you beat it. Uh, even though I rolled really good, um, you managed to worm your way out of its grasp. And what's interesting, uh, Levi, is you felt this chill building up on your arms. Um, and you actually felt your arms starting to go numb from its grip. Mm, okay. Um, and that is, uh, that's your action. You've got a bonus and a move. What would you like to do? Let's see. While staying within its reach, I want to shimmy around just so I can see everything. Okay. Um, and then use my bonus action to do a little quick little quick stab with my dagger. So <laughs> you can't... Trying to hit the same place I hit before. You can't stab um, unless you attacked. Like, you'd have to attack with your main action to use a bonus action attack. So oh, there's there are some um, things you can do as a rogue eventually. Like, once you hit level two, you'll be able to um, modify that. And there'll be some other benefits you can have. But for right now, there's not a lot you can do with your bonus action. Um, drinking potion, using items, things like that could be happening, but... Mm, uh, okay, let me just look real quick if there's any... Uh, ball, ball bearings would just sit in the snow. <laughs> um, Alright, <laughs> I'm going to do... Um, can I try and intimidate it as a bonus action? Is that an action? Uh, you, that, I will allow that as a bonus action if you want to try and intimidate it. How are you going to try and intimidate it? I'm just going to cry, try and match its yell towards me, both brandishing my teeth and just trying to match it. Okay, uh, In go tone. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> intense, um, And despite... <laughs> Despite uh, everybody laughing at your uh, impression, uh, you do notice that it seems a little, uh, a little bit more reluctant to attack. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> it's a fight of kittens, soft creatures. It has a phobia against kittens somewhere. Okay, Abed, your turn. Seriously. Um. Since my uh, phantom army has done nothing for me, <laughs> I am going to attempt a shocking grasp of the blue yeti. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to move in close? Uh, oh, I can't hit him from... Uh, you have to it. touch him. Oh, shit. <laughs> you have advantage, though, against the green one. You know what? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Um, I like it. A bold wizard. Yeah. Um, so I'm you can going roll, to attempt shot and grass. You can roll so. one more time to see if you crit. Okay. Because you have advantage right now on the green one. I'll take the 16. Okay. <laughs> go ahead and roll damage. 16 absolutely hits. Uh, let's see. Shit. There's that. So, nope. wait, is that it? Yeah. No. Like a joy buzzer. It's a D6 <laughs> or is it a D8? If you in the chat, if you click on where it says, yeah, shock you have and to grasp. click the shocking grass oh. thing. Uh, sorry. No worries. There you go. Uh, two. Well, I rolled. Like I said, it too. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so <laughs> you watch uh, ZZ as this 
wiry framed pale older looking gentleman walks steps down off of the wagon and you see energy build in his palm as he grabs the yeti by the arm and you just watch as this little thing zaps into him and the yeti's hair seems to stand on end and it looks a little more pissed than it was before my eyes are popping out of my skull i can't believe i'm doing this but as i do it i'm going ah and obed in your head you hear this faint whispering of Yes. Yes. Um, and that is your action. Your a little bit of your move. You still have move and bonus if you'd like. I'm gonna try and uh, dive behind uh, <laughs> ZZ here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so try and get like here. Okay. And you're gonna stop right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you dive be oh Zizi, you just watch as this same old man seems to like we meekly dive behind you and try to bury almost like his head in the snow. Like you don't see me if I, I can't see you. If I can't see you, you can't see me. And Zizi, it is your turn. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so <laughs> I watch the wizard joy buzz the thing to piss it off and then dive behind me and I'm just like Where's that? What is that Calvary doing? Um, and then I will turn my attention to the green one, the glowing green one, figuring maybe I can hit this one. And roll with advantage. Okay, advantage, two handed. Do I, oh yeah, my no. god. <laughs> and I'm like, ah! It's the DM's <laughs> curse. I know it. I know it well. Um, well that's my turn. So you, oh, Obed, you bury your head a little bit in the snow and you look off to your side and you watch as this like crazed armor clad warrior just swings in <laughs> this glowing outlined, like green outlined Yeti and just wildly miss and I'll actually land like a foot or so behind your body in the snow. Uh, cool. Yep, so uh, the Yetis get to go now. Yep. And uh, the first Yeti is going to try and grapple you, ZZ, again. Contested athletics at normal. Damn. 17. You just managed to break it. Like, it just, nothing it does seems to be able to connect with you. And, uh, you slippery devil. The one. Uh, I can't hit them. I can't hit them. Like, uh. The limb. <laughs> the limbed one and next to you the outlined one is going to swing at you now wildly um and with the same level of abandon uh that is a 15 to hit i am 16 oh that's right because you don't have your shield on okay so that misses uh and then you watch uh levi as the other one next to you is going to move in um, this one actually you watch arana and levi as you would have expected the big one to move in on you and instead, it seems to be moving away from you and closing in on Levi and getting a little By bit further way, away. What's up? He would like to shout, Arana! <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there's, so the green one is going to uh, attempt to uh, grapple you again, uh, Levi. Okay. Oh, it doesn't have So wait, what is it happens if it's intimidated? Does that just mean it's... Uh, intimidation uh, can advantage? lead to a couple of other things, but because you're in combat, it's a little bit more worried about the one that's big and standing behind it than it is about um, what you've done. Now, if you did a couple of other things, this one also hadn't seen what Arana did, so that might have done more had, um, Arana, had Arana been in proximity of that one too. Check. Acrobatic. Come on now. This is fucking this frigid cold air and yeah. my arms on yeah, the arm. Yeah, the just, they're so just you, frozen up right now. You Plastic watch cold. as the uh, the green outlined Yeti manages to grab hold of you again. And uh, the other Yeti looks at you and glee, like almost like a smile like of prey about to be devoured, is going to swing at you with its two claws. Uh, that is a 12 to hit. <laughs> uh, 12 to hit. Yeah. Uh, miss. AC 14. Okay, and I think, actually, he can still see that. So, actually, that was an 8 to hit. Um, and his second claw attack is... Oh, 
13. Uh, miss. Oh, that, that could have been way bad. I had a 21. He has disadvantage right now. Wow. Uh, so that's their turn. Wow. Uh, Arana, your turn. <laughs> Arana, you just hear your name shouted by DC. One, two, three. Uh, I'll go f- right there. Um, and then I'm going to throw the produce flame at the uh, one that has fairy fire. Okay, roll it with advantage. 24 oh. is going to hit. <laughs> Better go ahead than and what? click. Six fire damage. Okay. Um, you watch <laughs> as its fur, as the fire connects with it. You see uh, ZZ on the eyes of this one that's outlined that just swung at you. This crazed look as it pan, like a panicked look as it takes uh, all this damage and you watch as it basically its whole body just engulfs in fire and it just falls to the ground screaming like it runs in a small circle and screams until it just dies and holy it, shit I killed it yeah it's dead um nice. uh I'm gonna shout it worked it worked <laughs> <laughs> uh yell over the hoof proof uh, J- uh, uh, sorry I wasn't expecting that to happen obviously um, how do I see how far I've moved this turn what's the key press uh, should be space or Z I think space no Z oh, oh no that brought up my character oh Fuck. it's because you did small movements you were here okay I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna say I'll move right there and that'll be yeah. m- my movement 25. but she's feet. gonna yeah, she's got the uh, quarterstaff in one hand, and uh, she is ready to close in and attack if she needs to. Okay. Uh, that's your turn. Orion, yeah. you're up, buddy. Oh, and she also says, I'm right here. What do you want, ZZ? Except for instead of it's, I'm right here in a soft tone, it's, I'm right here, ZZ. Because <laughs> you got this howling wind and snow, blinding snow. Like, you guys can't yeah. even see your partners over here. The, you three over in this small area can't yeah. even see them. Are the hoof prints still going? Or the hoof? Yeah, the hoof speeds because Obed didn't cancel it. He'd have to spend a, an action to cancel it. There's wind in the <laughs> hoof prints. I will not. <laughs> Hell yeah. Really keep it going. This is our battle music, baby. All right. Uh, let's see. Can I see the green one at all? Can you hear me? Yeah. I, yeah. Are I'm you looking so. the green one? Uh, you can take out the measuring tool to measure it, but I think so. Yeah. He's just inside of your thing and he's outlined in fire. Gotcha. The one that you okay, barely yeah. see, but he's looming is uh, the bigger one. Yeah. Uh, but that's still within range. Oh, okay. yeah. No disadvantage. So I will do uh, my longbow this time and because I'm tired of that guy trying to pounce on my brother. Well, he's got uh, him currently grappled, so yeah. Uh, and, 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 right. Yep. And so I will then do sharpshooter as well. Okay. Remember with advantage. And, uh, yep. Oh, yeah. Make sure to turn that on. Thank you. And let's roll. Go for it. Nice. Wow. Jesus. So, 22. Damn. So that enough? So to not end? 22, actually, but it's actually uh, 20. Yeah, minus 5. So. Yeah, but yeah, 17, 17 is but... enough to hit. So go ahead and roll damage. Make sure you have Sharpshooter clicked on for your damage as well. Yep. This one's only taken a little bit of damage so far. The time to yeah. stabby. You, uh, Levi, you're standing there. You can't even see your brother because he seems to be behind the gates. And you just watch as an arrow comes flying out of out from behind the gates and nails this thing, drills it right in the freaking eye socket. And you watch as this, like, pokes out the back and you see a spray of blood as this thing just lets, like, its grip, like, seems to loosen a little bit and it just falls over, almost taking you with it. Do I get covered in blood? Uh, no. <laughs> Because it goes the opposite oh. direction. It sprays out this direction. Um, so I just watch the life bleed from its eyes. It's just much. staring at me. I... Where was that? Oh, there used to be a thingy I could do, but I don't have that anymore, I guess. 
if I may, as a reaction whisper, go to sleep as it like falls off. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, like I just say, sweet dreams, Prince, as it just falls and away then, from you. Uh, as yeah. it falls away from me. Yeah. And a riot. Uh, and there's not any. I guess it would count as an action. Uh, the caravan still just kind of. This caravan the seems everything. to start getting ready to move, and it might. St these caravan wagons might start moving a little bit here on this next turn. As it seems like most of the yetis are being dealt with, um, and it seems like a lot of the people are um, starting to push back the fights, and it's not just you guys. Um, and it looks like the town guard are starting to rally around and take out the bigger yetis that have climbed the walls. And then I'll get in. You're going to go climb back into your wagon? <laughs> I'm going to climb back up top into the, the wagon, yeah. Okay. Uh... And pretty much say, Levi, get in here. Let's get inside. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and that's your turn? Yeah. Okay, Levi, it's your turn. What are you doing? I, in an exasperated way, yell back, I can't get over there. And <laughs> I attack without a sneak attack, but I just uh, make a rapier dagger attack on the big boy in front okay. of me. No sneak attack. Uh, as you make your first swing with your rapier, um, the blow doesn't seem to connect. Um, in fact, it almost looks like he dodges and dances just back out of it. And for such a large creature, it seems more nimble than you were expecting. Amazing. All right. Yeah. I'm going to try and do a little. The dagger, however, will connect with a 23, 21. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, for one point of damage as you basically <laughs> poke him and he looks really pissed <laughs> is this like tiny trickle like not even like you can almost imperceptible amount of blood in his fur as you poke him like in his in his like uh, lower calf and he's like as I've already like when he like makes that noise toward me as I've already used my bonus attack action yeah. I like ready my cat yelp for next round gotcha <laughs> Okay, and that's your I turn? I just shake my head. I just shake my head. <laughs> Obed, your turn. What are you doing? So having successfully dispatched the last Yeti by myself... Mm -hmm. Clearly. I'm uh... going to... <laughs> <laughs> um... He's allowed his delusions. <laughs> uh, I'm going to attempt... Another minor illusion. Okay. Yes. I want Love. to see if I can do kind of a Bugs Bunny dressing up like a sexy lady. You know what I mean? Oh, like oh, like man. a sexy yeti in the other direction going like, you. Yeah. Well, where I'm do you like want to running away? Ping where you want to place it. I love it. Oh, I thought you were making yourself look like a sexy guy. Oh, no, no. I mean, no. Okay. Okay. So, no, we don't need any context. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you see off in the distance, like right about here, we'll say. Uh -huh. um, a Yeti is easy. Another Yeti, but this one seems smaller and stationary. Like it's not even moving. It almost looks like it just appeared <laughs> there from, from in front of you as you're readying up to deal with this Yeti in front of you. And it doesn't appear, at least at the moment, that the other Yeti has taken notice of it. At the moment you cast this, uh, does can you put Minor Illusion into the chat again? Yeah. I just want to see it real quick. Uh, if you create an image of an object such as... Da, 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 the image can't create sound light, blah, blah, blah. If a creature uses its action to examine the sound... Uh, The illusion also ends if you dismiss it as an action. So you can create a sound image within range that lasts for one duration. Or or if you use an action to cast the spell again. So basically, you guys, like, ZZ, you see this creature and cre manifest. And then all of a sudden, the, uh, the, like, the foot stomps just cut out. And everybody just stops hearing the sounds of, uh, of foot, foot beats on snow and crunching ice. Is that I'm your turn? Also behind you. Oh, you're gonna shout out behind you. Okay. We'll see if it understands. Yeah, we'll see if it understands you. Common, but... 
Give it the old college try. Right. No worries. Right. Okay. Uh, with that, ZZ, it's your turn. Okay. ZZ is just going to be like, what is happening? <laughs> and I'm just going to attack the one in front of me. And... <laughs> nice. Holy shit. Nice. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, I'm not muted. You're fine. Oh. <laughs> Oh, could have been just so good. Just clip this one to death. Yeah, like you watch as he <laughs> seems to finally, like, uh, Arana, you come around the corner. You hadn't really witnessed it, but it looks like you see sweat beating up and almost immediately freezing on his cheeks. Uh, ZZ seems to be struggling a little bit, and he finally looks like he connects, but as he connects, it just, like, grazes across the creature's stomach, almost like it was about to disembowel and just barely miss the mark. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. ZZ, is that your turn? Yep, that is my turn. Okay. Uh, it is the Yeti's turn. And this Yeti looks down at you um, and notices that uh, notices that there's no longer fire on the field oh. and uh, is going to attack you with its two claw attacks. Uh, that is a 17 to hit. Hits. Uh, this Pretty isn't you, ZZ. This is uh, Levi. Oh. Sorry. Levi. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sexy in the, in the, yeah, in the, that hits. Right there. What's that? <laughs> there's that there's a sexy Yeti going, you. Yeah, he's he's focused <laughs> on him. So it hits seven points of more, slashing damage. It's more like seven a point. cardboard yep. <laughs> And he swings. It looks like he's readying up a second attack, and he swings in at you. Oh, 23? That hits. For five points of slashing tank. damage. And I go down. So wait. I'm at uh, five You're at zero. I'm at You're at zero. Oh. So you watch Orion as Levi, being harried by this creature, standing there looming large, just wails down on your brother and knocks him unconscious. Oh. Yes. Um, and what's Levi! funny is after he connects with the second attack, he actually picks up Levi and holds him for a second, <laughs> realizing he's unconscious, just drops him on the snow. And he's going to use his movement to go over here and step up onto you. And, I was afraid he was about to rip Levi in half. Uh, oh, God, that was like... The one in front of you, ZZ, is going to make a swing attack at you with its claw. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hit the wrong button and I couldn't hear anything. Could you repeat? Repeat which part? You, what you just said. I'm coming after you, ZZ. Thank you. So 12 to hit, which I think misses. Correct. As he scrapes across your armor but doesn't seem to penetrate the metal uh, protecting your body. And just <laughs> roaring in anger as he's still got this blood gash on his chest that's just covering his fur now. Um, <laughs> and with that, Arana, it is your turn. Um, she is... Um, rule clarification. Mm -hmm. If I uh, somebody is in melee with a creature and I use a ranged attack, it's straight, right? It's a straight roll. You have to be okay. in melee with it to get a advantage, or obviously fairy fire. Okay, and then I'm gonna close in with this one and use assume, my side note, assume, league quarter staff. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I assume Chappie, you don't have a uh, concentration anymore, right? Yeah, I'm. St uh, He's well, still yeah, concentrating, but the spell, like you still see the 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 yetis on the, the snow. Bodies are, they're just yeah. light lit up by green, but their blood is pooling in around them. Gotcha. Yeah. So just a, a twenty to hit that thing. Uh -huh. Twenty definitely hits. And and Levi, you're not seeing any of that. You're, you're it's bludgeoning. Um, that's right. And and she's gonna say, if this kills me, you will pay. If it kills you, I won't care. <laughs> no, that's what she's saying to ZZ. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's your action and a little bit of your movement. Puts hair on your chest. Yeah. Okay. Um, and with that, Orion, we're back to you. And you literally just watch your brother get mauled, basically, to, to, to unconsciousness or potentially death, you don't know. And now this thing is coming in on you. I'm going to just just run at it. Well, it's right at me, so right. I'm gonna dive into it, and I'm gonna go in with my uh, short sword. Okay. Yep. Regular flat attack. Yep. Uh, 23 is definitely gonna hit. 
Go ahead and roll damage. All right. For six points of damage as you uh, bury what looks like your short sword halfway up into its fur and mass and you pull it back out and as you draw back you just see the red of the, the crimson of the blade and the blood starting to stain its fur um, but it Obvious. still looks like I mean it's a massive creature and you're barely <laughs> I know Yeah. I continue to scream out Levi and then I will go in with my hand axe oh, okay go for it the rage Oh. oh my god no. as you go to I, swing, I'm way way yeah. raged yeah you rage <laughs> and as you buried your blade your short sword and you draw it back and you go to swing tears start to fill your eyes as you see your unconscious brother laying there in the snow being covered now and you just bury your at hand axe at the into the wood of the wagon um it's it, it'll take you uh it'll take a bonus action to withdraw or draw it back up but it's it's oh, buried fine. in it right now and with that uh levi i need you to make a death saving throw for me please uh, bro the what bro the what <laughs> and you're not nice so what do i have to do i have to roll i just uh, have to roll on your character sheet yeah on your character sheet it'll mark he did he got a fail so you uh -oh. can mark on your character sheet one fail Ooh. okay 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 um and with that Obed, it's your turn. So my clever illusions have not served the, me. No, not in this moment, no. What clever illusions? And at that moment, Arana, you look over and notice that there's actually a, another Yeti standing off to your right, less than 15 feet away from you. It looks like a another cardboard cut out of a Yeti, because it's no. terrible. <laughs> it's, it's not a cardboard <laughs> cut out, but yeah, it looks it looks rough. It's got like blonde hair. Um, it's really short. It's wearing like a pink bikini. It's got some red lipstick on. It's really ugly looking. It's, it's it would be waving a handkerchief, but it's it's stuck in right. the upward motion. Um, uh, I think, am I? I guess I'm trying to think if I'm within 15 feet. Probably not. Uh, well, I guess I am. A where are guy. you trying to hit? That one. So yeah. a dazzling array of flashing colored lights springs from your hand. The total is how many hit points of creatures this spell can affect. Creatures in a 15-foot cone originating from you are affected in ascending order of their current hit points, ignoring unconscious creatures and creatures that can't see, starting with the creature that has the lowest current hit points, each creature affected by the spell. So this affects everybody in front of you. Well, then before I do that, I move here because I don't want to kill. Okay, so you're going to try and angle it so it doesn't. Okay, uh, right. go ahead and roll 60 10 for me. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I sorry, I popped out my character sheet. No, it's not going to be on um, your character sheet. On the side tab, on the left side of your screen, there's a little D20. You could actually uh, roll um, if you click on, if you click on it, it'll actually uh, allow you to go into it and do an advance, and you could roll sixty ten. Oh, sorry. Oop. It's See the advanced dice roller at the bottom. Well, there you just you click on it. it. There, yep, there you go. So 36. You watch, uh, ZZ, as the creature in front of you seems to go blind um, and is uh, no longer able to see you. It, in fact, it doesn't appear that it's able to see anything anymore. Okay. And is I that... Do that I, I, kind of, I kind of groan, like... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just pissed that my sexy lady Yeti didn't didn't distract him. <laughs> um, and DM, if yeah. it's when it's my, my question. Uh, is that your turn, Obed? Yeah, that is my turn. Okay, then. ZZ, is your turn. So, my question is, do we know about um, Orion at and this, Levi? At this point, you can, if you'd like to, I will allow you to, as a free action, to make a perception check to see if you had heard him over Orion over the wind that something's going on with Levi. Is that just Jay's character? Or Anybody everybody? who wants to have done it during their turn. So you do hear uh, Orion with what sounds like sorrow in his voice, screaming for Levi off in the distance, somewhere, somewhere to the north, uh, northeast of you. Okay. Um, 
at a game, I know I can get to him, and that's what I would like to do yeah. without disengaging or whatever. So I'll yeah, take go for it. Up yeah, it's going to be at disadvantage because it's blinded. So I'm gonna move my car character. Oh, you were lucky. That's disadvantage. I critted. Nice. Uh, 19 wow. to hit for three points of slashing damage. As you seem to run, the creature relying on its keen sense of hearing and its keen sense of smell smells you moving away from it and just swipes blindly at you and manages so, to rake uh, across your back. So Ooh. I notice what's going on and I say, Arana, you got this. <laughs> 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 okay. And I use my action to lay on hands and restore one hit point. <laughs> okay. Hooray. So you're back up to one hit point. You're no longer you're unconscious, none. but you are laying in the snow and you notice that there's about uh, a good inch of snow already accumulated on your body. Like it is coming down. Wow. So, I woke up and I'm grateful. Yeah. So you just see this um, blue paladin looking down on you, having touched the side of your face and say, wakey, wakey. And then you see this giant monster looming up over him. Behind him. <laughs> you put like a smile or something, like you're smiling at him while like giant creatures just standing over there. Right. It's like this blue person is beautiful. Um, and that's and my that, turn. That's your turn? That's um, an action and my movement. Okay. Now, does that like erase the death fails? Like, yes. That just, yes, That does. goes away now? Okay, mm -hmm. good. Um, you guys look as this creature uh, standing before you uh, has taken some hits and he looks a little bit bloody and the creature near you, Arana, and Obed seems to like panic and they both look like they're done as they see that the tides seem to be turning and they no longer wish to conflict. They're going to use their action and their movement to run off into the distance and I'm going to do... Did they disengage? Nope. Action okay. and movement to run. So you can roll an attack of up. You both will all have a reaction to attack them if you want. Would it still be an advantage since we were in, um, um, since it was like right here? Yeah, you would have advantage. Um, Obed would not. Okay. I assume I'm as I'm just kind of weaving around at, you know, at this hits. effort as an old man to do all this. I'm just like, it's moving away. I don't really care. Right. Would so Arana so. Give me a second. I'm gonna settle would, Arana oh, first here. Okay. So you, Arana, you watch as this thing looks like it's about to turn and run as it saw you burn one of its allies to a crisp. And Obed, <laughs> as the thing gets to about here, you watch as uh, Arana just clubs it across the back of the skull, and the thing just falls over, and a small pool of blood starts pooling out into the snow, which is then quickly covered by more snow, and it is dead. Um, and Rhonda just smiles. Yep. And then uh, uh, ZZ um, and uh, uh, Levi, you both will get, and uh, Orion, since you had your short sword out last, we'll all get attacks of opportunity on the big fella before he leaves. At normal right. or advantage? Um, you, ZZ, actually all three of you uh, would get advantage in order for him to break, except for, actually no. So I see him. Levi As I'm laying prone, yeah, I you, assume I don't get an attack. You would, you would get an attack, it's just a disadvantage. So yours oh, would be okay. made flat. You'd have a flat roll because you'd have advantage with ZZ and Orion next to it. Mm. And then as it breaks contact, yeah, all three of you get advantage. So Levi, yours is just a flat roll. Everybody else has advantage. Oh my god. Ooh. Yay! And you can roll sneak attack with that, Levi. Oh. That's a hit, that's a hit, that's a hit. All three of you fucking hit. Wow. For 10 oh. points of damage from ZZ. Cool. Oh. One point, 10, so 11 points from, that's 21. So you guys watch. <laughs> 29. Like, holy shit, yeah. You did just enough. You did just enough. This one tries to break free of you and just beat feet the fuck out of here. <laughs> and as soon as it turns to run, it, it like, you guys just all swing, stab, poke, and whatever at it. And the creature <laughs> just gets to about here. He walks like five more feet from where you guys are and then just collapses on the ground unconscious and uh, um, bleeding out in several spots. <laughs> I must have just pierced at its ankle. Yeah, like you, you, got it, you nicked its Achilles tendon 
and uh, both Zizi and Orion clipped arteries, one under its armpit and one on its inner thigh, and the thing just bled out almost instantaneously. I didn't even have a chance. And with that, we are now out of combat. Can I stab uh, it one more time and kick it and, and yell at it a little bit? Absolutely. Um, I am totally doing that. I'm just going to stab into it one more time. I know it's, it's not going to do anything, but it's worth it. I will pull Levi. Levi? Levi, yep. I'm going to stab into it. Just just uh, yell out Levi's name one more time. Because I may not have realized he's up yet. No, because he's still laying on the snow. He's just starting to stand up. As you guys reel from the attack um, and the onslaught, you hear the rumors and whispers of several of the townspeople um, muttering things like, what is this? This has never happened before. Why are they attacking us now? And they've never been so bold. And um, among everything that you hear, you hear these these guards, a couple of the guards grumbling, and it's more than a couple, uh, several different groupings of guards that have dealt with their things and are returning to their various posts and things throughout the town. Uh, you hear them muttering about, oh, gotta be them bloody ragged tribe members, stupid barbarians bringing all this bad luck upon us. Um, you also see what looks like one crazed off to the side of the main gate to the right, um, staring at his shop, which has this huge gaping hole uh, in the roof from one of the yetis, complaining and going on about, stupid Slim. What's the point of paying him if he's not going to freaking protect my shop when I need it? And he's he's ranting at guards, basically trying to... He's, he's ranting to anyone who will listen. And um, you see also uh, a little bit further in uh, what looks like somebody who was in uh, among the caravan that you recall seeing with the caravan. Uh, a dwarven merchant, a female dwarf, um, looking to some of her guards and... No worries, Jay. Uh, but you see, like, these guards, um, these two guards and this one dwarf woman looking to each other and the guards being basically settled up as they were a part of the caravan guard. They weren't necessarily um, her private guard. And um, her kind of looking a little flustered and uh, traipsing. Um, you all watch as ZZ makes his way in and sees a couple of the more wounded guards and seems to be trying to help tend to their wounds. Um, and, uh, ZZ, I will have you subtract two more lay on hand points as you tend to some of the more serious people that look like they may not have made it otherwise. <clears throat> done and done. <clears throat> but what would you all like to do? Um, I'd like to get to know Levi, my, the person I helped a little better, and also make sure Arana is okay as... I assume, assume I say clap Arana on the back and say, <clears throat> "Well done. I knew you hadn't abandoned us, even though it sounded like we had cavalry coming from somewhere." Hey. I, I was trying to keep myself safe while helping defend my allies. I wouldn't abandon you. Obed, did you laugh out loud in game? Uh, no, that was a uh... okay. Arrow, sorry. Okay. No, I'm just, I'm just curious if, like, if you, like, because I don't mind you laughing, like, if you find it funny. No, no, no. I, um, I'm consumed with, uh, I'm taking uh, bits of string, and kind of like putting them along, like the, like the Yeti's bodies are still there, right? Like they've like disappeared or anything. Like no, that. they're there. They're they're all there, okay. and they, um, but you look at them. And for whatever reason, this Yeti attack seems more, um, one, uh, cause, uh, who am I talking? Is this Obed, right? You're putting yeah, up the yeah. string. Yeah. You've never seen Yetis, but it seems out of place for a creature like this, a wild animal to attack, um, attack a city, especially a town this large. Actually, uh, Obed, make an arcana check for me if you would. Okay. Uh, why am I always bad at this? Hop okay, your there you go. Uh, 14. Um, 
from what you know about uh yetis in general they're not um they're they're native adjacent to the region they're native to the region but they're not native to this plane of existence okay um they seem to have been so they were brought here by someone else or something else long ago and they just flourished in this area but what you do know is that um typically speaking yetis are not stupid creatures like they're they're above average intelligence for a monster and these things normally like they might they don't one they don't typically attack in packs and two when they do attack things it's generally from concealment not you know brazenly against a town and not in such large numbers okay um so I'm I'm making notes in my on some scraps of parchment I have. I'm kind of measuring the size of the horns, doing like comparisons, like comparative um uh was not like taxonomy, you know what I mean? Like I'm like taking measurements to try and compare the big yeti and the little yeti and like yeah, making notes and looking around. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. Yeah, absolutely. Would I no- would I notice that Obed is doing that? Absolutely. He's not hiding it. Um Arana walks over to you and says in your notes, you might want to add that they are afraid of fire. Uh, thank you. And I, I make a little notation. And she just walks off. <laughs> okay. So, let's see. I, uh, I thanked, um, Arana, was it? ZZ. Who... Oh, ZZ. Oh, yeah, it was ZZ. Okay. So, I thank ZZ and I tell, I kind of just tells easy a little bit of kind of like what i saw while i was down and out just kind of is honestly making conversation (laughs) it's like oh i saw bright light and then after kind of pleasantries i kind of just depart from her and walk towards orion and i kind of just stand with orion he's a male yeah i was like who are you talking to he's a guy (laughs) Oh, okay. I was going to say it would help if we were able to see each other's pictures or to describe ourselves. Well, I see your picture. Uh, But yeah. And I'm going to yell at Levi for not getting in the caravan. (laughs) (laughs) Why don't you just get um, in the wagon? Just get in the wagon. That's what I said. And, uh... Yeah, uh, we probably should describe our characters. So... Yeah, if you'd like to describe what each of you looks like to each other so that everybody kind of knows, because you guys, like, t- you talked to the chat room, but you didn't necessarily talk to each other about what you look <laughs> oh, like. Oh, that's right, yeah. So right. no one knows what anybody looks like, and I kind of loosely described some of you as you did things, but that's about it. Yeah. So just kind really of loosely descri- like a description yeah. of your characters, and we'll start with the first one in the chat room, or on Roll20, so Arana. Arana is a uh, young, tall, slim female. She looks to probably be an elf of some kind. Um, tan skin, auburn hair, pale blue eyes, uh, wrapped in, or she dressed in green clothing over leather armor. Okay. Easy. <clears throat> uh, ZZ is a is uh, wearing um, some armor, and he. But the more s- striking feature that he has is actually that he is blue skinned, and you can see small, like pale white sort of etching lines. Uh, they don't look like they're. They could be tattoos, but they don't look like tattoos. Um, that sort of uh, go across his skin. Um, he has. Uh, he has a wrapping around um, one of his eyes uh, that goes around his head, um, and uh, probably be, you can see the peeking out of a scar, um, but is otherwise um, wearing chainmail and carries a big battle axe and seems very interested in small detail work on um, item, um, but otherwise will charge forward with gusto into. Uh, the most recent battle. Now, question for you, ZZ. Since, you, since because of what you are, um, and there is snow blowing around you, and I know you can loosely control air, are you kind of manipulating the air to be almost like a pocket around you, like the snow's not actually touching you? Um, you, he would seem at home. He wouldn't seem bothered by it. 
So okay. if the if the wind were gusting really hard and everyone was struggling, he would not struggle as much. Okay. But um, so that's I what I'm asking. Like, if, are you letting the cold snow touch you, kind of thing? Yes. Okay. But not touch, but not hinder. I would gotcha. say. Yeah. Is, is the threshold. Okay. Um. Cool. And Levi. Um. Well, I'm a young, uh, looking human male and uh, kind of fairly average height, but pretty much rail thin. Um, blonde hair, blue eyes. And uh, he has a very much an easygoing nature about him. Um, he seems like he has a very pleasant, welcoming smile. Uh, but um, he seems to like move about with kind of easygoing flourishes in a kind of almost rhythmic dancing way. Okay. Obed? Uh, I am <clears throat> kind of a feeble, frail looking man. I'm a human male. I'm 5'6", 115 pounds. So I'm kind of on the thinner side of things with gray hair that is kind of tufting out, but I'm going bald pretty clearly. Ooh. Um, and I've got kind of florid, like pinkish skin, like kind of that, like, you know, appearance of like, uh, maybe a guy that like drinks too much or something. Um, and I've got, uh, some kind of like fancy clothes on under my, my furs. Um, and just kind of bobbing around a little absent minded looking, um, kind of like a guy you'd, you'd see like feeding, feeding pigeons in a park or something like that. Just a curiosity, Obed, do you uh, at all, like, talk to yourself offhand? I'm bumbling a little bit, especially as I'm, like, taking these measurements. I'm, like, you know, two inches, three in, three in diameter, you know, kind of muttering a I little bit. I guess what I'm asking more is do you give off any, of, any sense that, um, like, that you might be a little crazy or something like that um, because of what you hear? Well, if... If it's weird to have a constant conversation with yourself as you're puttering around. Okay. No, I'm know. just asking um, if that's something, if that's an aesthetic that you have. Like, do you mutter yeah, to yourself I mean, I, and stuff? Yeah, I think it's kind of a, like, clearly I'm, I'm thinking about stuff a lot. Like, there's kind of there's kind of a conversation happening that not everyone is necessarily privy to, but I'm not, like, frothing at the mouth or anything. Yeah, okay. Think. Yeah, I wouldn't expect you to be frothing. It was more of just, more of, like, no, stupid, stupid. Yeah, Should, yeah, yeah exactly. that kind of stuff. That yeah. that's what I was getting at. Okay, and Orion. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> I look fairly similar to Levi. I was making sure I wasn't on mute. No, you're good. I was. I look fa fairly similar to Levi, uh, but I am uh, just a bit older uh, and I'm a bit taller. Um, and you can see me often doting and, and looking over um, my brother. Uh, but yes, uh, blue eyes, blonde hair, human. And you're also um, not uh, as thin, right? You're a little yeah. Bit... I'm also a bit more, you know, uh, built and and been out in the elements, um, so look sturdy. Something yeah. I think that would notice on you is probably the fact that you're like something you've seen on all the people, and you guys are all starting to develop is this wind, wind rash. Mm. Um, and it doesn't like Orion uh, already had the wind rash when you met him in Luskin on the begin of this journey um, because he spends a lot of time up in the area so is Orion a guy? yeah yeah. everybody mm -hmm. except for Arana is if, a male that picture I thought it was a dress <laughs> a mini skirt <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah no that's just uh, the like it's him uh, kneeling the... in the snow it's a cloak over him kneeling in the snow yeah the cloak it's a cloak okay because I can't see I see like uh, short mini skirt that uh, looks like a girl, and I was like, maybe it's a girl. No, it's right. uh, it's just a leather armor, and it's going over. No worries. And that's Orion, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll yeah, come I, up. I made the pictures large, so I can actually see that it's a person holding no, a big good. ass sword. Um. Because I usually just have it at names only. So. Ah, that's better. You guys kind of interact with one another. You kind of talk. And get to know one another a little bit. Um, you see, obviously, Orion kind of doting over his brother and Levi, just kind of 
pushing him away, like, get off me, I'm fine. Um, you watch as Obed seems to be offhandedly notating random various things about the conflict. Uh, and you actually see Arana looking over at ZZ and kind of almost ecstatically going like, well, as much emotion as one might show, um, like shock that she, like you were right, ZZ. I was able to defend and help and hold my own. Yeah. Um, but you all see, like I said, um, you hear the rumors and mutterings of some barbarian and it's all that barbarian's fault. What, why did he have to bring this trouble with him? You see uh, a dwarf looking absently as she slowly makes her way towards what looks like uh, one of the local inns. Um, kind of muttering to herself and looking troubled. And you see this crazed apothecary, like the guards have moved off from him now. And he's just like, you, you see him, he's angrily muttering to himself and cursing some guy named Slim. Apothecary? Would, apothecary, yep. I'm going to perk up when I see a, a fellow eccentric and kind of uh, start walking towards him as I kind of cram my balls of string and parchment back into my robes. Okay, I'll bet. Uh, so you walk up to this crazed apothecary. Um, what do you say? Because he doesn't notice you right off the bat. Good morrow. Is the, uh, is the man inside his shop or outside? He's outside looking at the damages that have been done to the exterior of his building. Can I walk inside the shop? Uh, you can try and walk past him, but as you uh, watch Obed walk up to him, uh, you see this man go, Yeah, what is it? <clears throat> Fucking Slim, causing all this trouble. Supposed to be protecting my building, and here he is letting it get destroyed. Want my money back. Hey, hey, yo, no. You're not going in there. The business is closed right now. I need to get repairs done. And he's looking okay. at you, Arana. What do you want? Jesus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of, gra- like you know, friendly pat on the shoulder and he say, immediately like, moves away and kind of roughly pushes your hand away from him. And says, "We ain't friends." I'm gonna kind of flop down like that. Really, like knocked me for a loop and like fall on my ass and go, oh. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go back to dealing with my shop unless you want to help. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, say, uh, let's see. you've struck me, sir. You've struck me. I'm just like shouting, like, uh, you know. He he looks unconcerned. This is like a soccer flop. Yeah. He looks I like just look. Yeah. Go ahead. I just want to uh, look toward the shop to see if there's, like, anything that would catch her eye as an uh, herbalist. Uh, as you kind of look, make a perception check. And you watch as he immediately sees you. And <clears throat> yeah, you look, and as you try to look and peer in from the outside, he sees you and says, "What are you trying to thieve? Huh? Get away from my shop! I said it's closed." Go oh, deal with this bloody... P- you know how much it's going to cost to fix this place? Well, I was looking to see if I wanted to purchase anything, but I'm not interested in purchasing anything from you. Yeah, good luck. You're not going to find another apothecary in the ten towns. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah. ZZ would have been close behind Orana, but just sort of listening. And what was this gentleman's name again? No one oh, introduced Disney. themselves, so he didn't introduce himself. Okay. Um, ZZ is going to say... I also run a shop, uh, good sir, and I do know how hard it is to find uh, good guards, having been one in my time past. (laughs) ZZ, is it? Name's Reardon, and quite frankly, I don't have guards. I have some stupid sleazeballs calling themselves a protection racket, and they can't even freaking protect my shop. They owe me money. Uh... They, what do they owe you money for? Because they couldn't protect your shop? Because I pay them to protect my shop and they couldn't bloody protect it. Um, Reardon, you... What, uh... Hey, look, I if mean, you want to try and get some he... money back for me, feel free. 
I know where he stays, but I ain't about to go over there. He's got a bunch of thugs with him. Never goes well for me. Uh... What's in it for us? I'm willing to split whatever you can get back. I'll do a 50-50 split whatever you get back from him. I will forego the money if I can shop in your shop. Are you... Uh, sure. Deal. Oh, <laughs> Starts to stand up and says, I'll take half. Um, his hat. And at that moment, Arana and Zizi, you guys feel um, like a light tap on your shoulders. Um, and it seems like a, a small balding man with a brown friar tuck style uh, cut, but very fine clothing. And then what looks like very fine furs stands behind you and says, um, um, Arana and Zizi, right? Yes. Uh -huh. My name's Donovan. Um, believe you had a shipment you were guarding. I'm going to be taking it back to my warehouse. Just so you're aware, uh, I'll make sure that Aaron gets the message. I just wanted to let you know. Yes, very good. Thank you. And he see him. Arana, was there anything else that we needed? Or is that suffice? We get money or something? I forgot. Uh, you no. were being paid in you something got the else. Missive. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, ZZ's following your lead. <laughs> I forgot. I was like, um... This is yes. your mission, and you are being paid in something other than money. This is... There's the matter of my payment. Again. I, I thought you got money. this all in the, the, the note, but I'm going to let Aaron know you're here, and he'll come and talk to you. Okay, okay. We'll um, meet him at the thing. No worries. And you just see Donovan kind of shake his head a little bit at the uh, spaciness of Arana and then just kind of walk it's away. I know it's more Chappie. Chappie's memory. I know. But <laughs> since Chappie's playing Arana. <laughs> I was I was like, oh, I don't remember. We just had this conversation two hours ago. Right. And I, I asked for a handout. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, oh wow. you wanted a handout for that. Got it. Yeah. Um, I will work Easy on that. Whispers, I didn't have remember Kelvin's comfort. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, uh, Reardon looks to you, Obed, and uh, Rana, who's now distracted, and says, "Look, I know Slim. He's over at the North. Look, all the all the mercs and whatnot that live in this city. Let go to that place. It's one of the shadiest taverns in this town. But you go there, and you could probably get me my money back. You just I'm need to go say... talk with Slim." Despite your rough handling of me, sir, I will join my fellow caravan mates and see if we can return your money. And Half I of healed, it, anyway. I healed Le Levi. You Levi. healed Levi. Levi. Levi and two other people, so you have two points of healing left in your pool. Right, right. just checking. Yeah. Um, Wait, does it heal? look like he is roughed up? Oh yeah, Levi looks like he's bruised, beaten, and otherwise barely standing. Oh, uh, I mean, he was the one who flopped. Who yeah. No, over. Obed. Okay. Obed flopped. So oh, that's yeah. who I meant, Obed. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to look down at Obed and see if Obed looked like he was. No, he he looks okay. like, he looks perfectly fine. And uh, Obed, if you'd like, make a perf um, performance check. And Zizi, you can make a counterintuitive uh, insight. And am I still, you know, gasping for air on the verge of death? Uh, you're on the verge of death, but you, um, you're, you're just, you're wounded. You feel hurt. Um, okay. Zizi, uh, you believe like this, like Reardon must have really done a number on Obed. Oh, uh, like he looks, he looks like he, he really got the crap knocked out of him falling to the ground like that. Obed, I'm maybe a good night's rest will put you in. In better health. It I muttered. I mutter out loud. Oh, it sorry. is a rough town we are in. Well, after dispatching, after saving everyone from the yeti, I feel like I should, I should follow you to make sure you don't get in any more trouble. Uh huh. Um, Mr. Reardon, do you? Is it okay if we get the money tomorrow, or do you need it today? As soon as possible. 
I prefer today, but if you have other business you need to tend to. Our friend here is gravely injured, and... And he looks over, and he just looks like... He looks at it, and he's like... <laughs> you get the sense that this guy doesn't give two shits about anybody else other than himself. And something that you guys are starting to get a sense of is uh, a lot of the people that live up here... It's all about them and theirs. Mm -hmm. And they don't give a half damn about anybody else. And he just looks at you and goes, whatever. <laughs> well, Arana, let us be on our way with our new travelers. Yeah, let's... I mean, do you want to go to the inn? Um, I've that we're staying at or that has been well, set up. I believe up. it's Kelvin's Comfort is the end, correct? Yep. And um, most of you, like, you know, uh, even Reardon's like, oh, you're staying at Kelvin's Comfort. That's that's not cheap. Good luck with that. And he kind of goes, he watches, he seems to go, like, he looks at his shop and the damage done, <laughs> shakes his head one more time and then goes in and shuts the door and you just hear a, cl a lock and a bar slide and then that's about it from Reardon, and you just see uh, guards still mo milling about and moving back to their positions. Um, once we get away from the shop, mm -hmm. I'm going to look at everybody and I'm going to say, do we give a crap about him, or are we just going to go on about our way? We should see... <laughs> uh, ZZ sort of like scoffs your suggestion and says we should do everything in our power to see if this slim person can be set on a better path okay I'd be fine finding out what's going on and seeing if this apothecary has any wares of, of value and do I'm I know sorry. this town? Uh, out of character, do I know this town very All right. well? You are pretty familiar with uh, Bryn Shander. Um, it's not one of the places you stayed the most, uh, but yeah. it is one of the places you did frequent the most. You know of, like, Kelvin's Comfort. You know of Reardon um, and his apothecary goods. He's generally not known for, like, potions of healing or, like, any higher-end stuff, but he's definitely good for, like, Salves and creams and things that help with like windburn and rashes and ointments and things like that. Okay. Um, and that's something what, like yeah. But well, just just on a side note, like I probably while this is all going down, mm -hmm. I I probably before you guys even started, basically when we arrived to town, I yep. probably mentioned to Orion just that I'll see you at the Kelvin's Comfort, and I think I wanted to follow that. Uh, merchant dwarf and just because I didn't want to like lose her she seemed okay. like she was off in a hurry but she seemed she had important business to do she actually wasn't off in a real big hurry actually it looked almost like she was um sulking it appeared okay um but yeah so well, I, I maybe okay. that's something we can do later but like no, I we can do that right now her. um because it looks like everybody so you're saying that during the conversation with Reardon you would have tried to tail off after this dwarf yeah okay um so we'll go ahead and follow up on that then uh so okay. Levi as you approach uh the dwarf um she's kind of lost in thought she doesn't give you much notice um mm -hmm. what do you do to get her attention well, first I like, because this is something I'm used to doing, um, is kind of observing first before letting myself be known. Okay. I kind of just, I kind of just saddle up next to her, you know, and I try and be like, not intimidating or not oppressive in any way. I'm kind of just there. Okay, make a performance like, check. Uh, How are you being not intimidating? Not intimidating, meaning I'm kind of just sitting within earshot, you know, and kind of like- So like five turn. feet, 10 feet back? Five feet, but I'm not like directly facing her. You know, I'm kind of just sitting off to the side, kind of like a person that just happens to be sitting next to her. You know what I mean? Gotcha, no worries. Like, so you're standing a little uh, bit off of, away from her, trying to listen in yeah. on the conversation. Um, yeah, just see, yep. like she seems 
upset about Absolutely. something just to see yep. if she says anything to herself um anything and like it doesn't that. appear that she seems to notice you kind of like shadowing her for a bit um mm -hmm. you hear some muttering mm -hmm. uh make a perception check see how much you make out because you are standing behind her and there's a fairly heavy windstorm happening uh but despite all that you're you're used to shadowing people and this is one of the ways you used to get information to help with some of the cons that you and tom used to pull and while walking alongside her walking just beyond just behind her you hear her muttering stuff like uh how am i supposed to get there now the monsters are attacking and then it got like the a gust of wind blows by and you miss the next couple of lines and i'm gonna have to hire somebody and then another gust of wind and uh, this isn't gonna be cheap and at this point, you know, I kind of approach her a bit more and just say, you know, um, you know, you, um, how do I say? Just that, uh, like what, you know, you seem to be lost in thought, miss. Um, as you kind of roll up to her, um, the wind kind of blocks out your movements and she kind of gets a little bit startled, um, but being a dwarf and being kind of like a hardy stock, she does, she startles, but collects her composure quickly and says, what is it? What do you want? Oh, there's nothing I want. I just, you know, I'm always out to help those in need. And uh -huh. do you seem to be in need of something? Uh, and she kind of looks you up and down, almost like sizing you up mm -hmm. and says, I am in need, but I don't think you're going to be what I need. Are you by um, yourself? I kind of, uh, I meant, uh, no, I'm, I'm here with my brother and, you know, already I see that there's, on this caravan I've come with, there seem to be a good group of trustworthy folk. Hmm. Well, as long as you're not by yourself and depending on the make of all your friends, you might be of use to me. Um, at Go I ahead. kind of like at this point just get closer to her and kind of you know at this point I'm like right next to her and kind of just you know just like not really say anything but leaning in just to hear more mm, the name's Helda Silverstream what's yours oh uh, my name's Levi pleasure to meet you Levi is it Helda well I'll be staying at Kelvin's comfort I, I have business I need to attend to here first before I can move on um Maybe uh, get your party together and I can let you all talk to you all and see what you all have to say unless you say that you speak on this on behalf of the party. Well, I ask um, what uh, hmm, well, I, is there anything else you can tell me before you leave, whether it be your time frame, miss? I, I would love to help you. I I don't know if I can immediately it might, wrangle these. It's going to be soon, but uh, like I said, I have business to attend to. Um, like I said, mm -hmm. uh, just if you can, within the next couple of days, try and make your way to Kelvin's Comfort and see me. I'll be in the main room every day between uh, between 10 and like 10, and she gives you like a various time, like 10 to 8 or 10 to 6. Okay. And I kind of light up and say, that's wonderful. That's already where my brother and I, Ryan, are planning on staying. You know, I'll be looking for you in the main room. All right, Levi. Sounds good. Right. Um, and Sounds at this point, she actually, you guys had walked for quite a while mm -hmm. um, during this conversation and actually had made it to Kelvin's Comfort, and you see her just walk into the doors. Uh, make mm -hmm. a perception check for me, Levi. Uh, from where you're at, the snow is lessened. No. Nope. Um, you just see a bunch of people kind of milling about. Um, and a lot of movement happening up at the town market square. But other than that, I mean, nothing that stands out to you. After having, uh, after having that conversation, like I'm probably wish her well, but at this point I'm kind of just standing in front of the Kelvin's comfort, like right. looking around, where's Orion, where's everyone else? And I about, heard any about that time yeah. as you're standing there, the rest of the group is starting to make their way up the street and you can see them probably about 50 to 50 to hundred feet out from you. Okay, I probably am saying this to Orion, but I'm probably saying it loud enough that anyone who would care to hear can hear me. And I just tell Orion, like, Orion, there's an opportunity here. I think this merchant looks is wearing, you know, gaudy clothing. She looks like she could have some wealth to herself and she's in need of assistance. 
So I kind of say that to Orion, but anyone could have heard me. Well, uh, you, I was actually thinking I was following you the whole entire time uh, without oh. you really being quite aware. And then, oh, so pretty much that's yeah. where it's like, I, and then I pretty much just put my hand on your shoulder and be like, what, what mischievousness are you up to again? I suddenly like take a jump back because I didn't realize you were with me the whole time. Like, wow. You were so focused on your mark that you failed to take in your surroundings, something that Tom has scolded you for much in the past. Uh, I just muttered to myself a bit. And I was like, ah, I see. Another con, huh? I kind of smile a bit like you could have been a good con man yourself. Enough of this. Uh, let's meet up with the rest of the party, see what's next. Uh, there might be some work for us in the North Look. Sounds good. I kind of just take your lead. Which, at that point, you guys kind of meet about halfway up the road, um, somewhere around here. We're meeting like around here, you said? Boop. Yeah, right here. It? Like somewhere in this ballpark. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, but we, <clears throat> Arana and ZZ and everyone else was not there because, right? Just no, checking. yeah, no. So, so you, Z Z the, uh... ZZ, Arana, and Obed were dealing with Reardon and Levi seemed to have just kind of slipped away or walked away from the group, um, following a uh, dwarf and Orion, always the uh, ever overbearing brother, saw his brother starting to walk off and kind of follow, trailed him. I tried to keep track of what you guys were talking about, but I only got a bit of it and then, and then walked followed off. him. Yep. Uh, out of character, are we... Are we aware, like, uh, just so we are sure, is the caravan then, that was it, and now that, we're here, or? Yeah, that was the caravan here. Um, you saw and still see, um, obviously, this road that you're on is probably about 25 to 30 feet wide. It's the biggest road that leads through Bryn Shander, and the reason being is that it seems to lead to this uh, place, the Market Square. Yeah. And it's actually uh, just in the dead center, almost, of the town where all the traders are basically going to set up and, um, you know, get their, get their wares present and ready to go. Um, you guys kind of got here around, uh, like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, despite all the delays, you guys managed to get here, uh, fairly early in the day from when you had set off and you see a lot of the tra traders, uh, hurriedly rushing to get to the market square to set up and get themselves established here. Okay. okay so then so, yeah the, we, we pretty much brought the caravan here so our, our mission was to bring it to this point uh who, which one was that Obed oh Orion no. sorry. Orion sorry okay I'm sorry I'm trying to get your guys' voices down no no um yeah yeah so your your mission you didn't really have a mission Orion you were following your brother yeah, um, exactly. But that's what it's like. Yeah. I, so being but, on it, we might have known that it's like the caravan was going. It's not like yeah. it's continuing past this town. Some some of the merchants might be going to like Targos or any of the other gotcha. towns. Um, they could be going to East Haven or any of a number of different towns in the area. But as you as far as you know, most of them, Bryn Shander is a place where people come to do trade. And then very few, if not uh, seldom, traders make their way to the other towns, which is why Bryn Shander kind of got built up in the first place. Bryn Shander was mm. originally um, a place where one person from Targos would come out and meet and um, to make trade deals and stuff. And then the traders would just come to them. It was it used to be just the council hall used to be just a trade, um, uh, a stopping point, like a way station for trader traveling traders. And then they would make their way to Targos. And then eventually uh, traders from like vendors and merchants from the various towns started to come to Bryn Shander or come to the council hall place to sell their wares. And eventually a town started establishing itself around um, around the council hall and to what we have now is Bryn Shander. So okay. it's, it's kind of one of those things where... Yeah, some might be leaving, but as far as you know, most of them were just happy to get here based on how long the arduous journey was and are just trying to get some sell, like get their wares up for selling as well as trying to procure possibly some goods. And you actually see more than a handful of the wagons along the shop, like along this main road, dropping off various things and goods that were agreed upon to be dropped off 
like they're driving uh, driving their wagons and then going into these back alleys to drop off their goods at the back doors. Okay. So. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That gives me better context. Okay. Yeah, no so worries. So then, yeah, I'll pretty much say to Levi, it's like, now that we've gotten here, what's, what's next on your agenda? Well, I'm... Uh... I don't really say, I don't go into detail like why, but just say that, you know, I'm looking, I kind of, I'm looking for a person who goes by the name of Fig, and I kind of just give him like a little bit of the detail I know about him, just a little bit of his description. Why are you I going after Fig? He, you remember, you remember good old Tomboy, right? Um, yeah. He seems to be... <laughs> I, I just uh, he he seems to be connected in some way to Tom, and that's you know, as we now Tom has left this world. It's all I really have left to remember him by. And I don't really go into detail about good or bad, but just that he's connected to Tom, and that like just a kind of more of a way to remember Tom. I want to find him and talk to him about him. Well. Why don't we take it easy for now? You did just almost die. And it's yeah. at this moment you're feeling like your bruises, your your uh, ribs are bruised, and you've got like several cuts that are still semi bleeding, even though a lot of them closed up with the uh, healing that uh, ZZ had given you. Um, mm. And you're starting to catch, like you're starting to feel the shortness of breath, like the adrenaline starting to wear off finally, and you're starting to feel that shortness of breath. And I also like kind of stagger a little while, turning out my pockets that. Also, I could use a bit more cash. A bit light these days. How much do you need? Oh, I... I wouldn't impose on you. And I say th basically say thank you, but no thank you. Because I don't want to owe you anything. Um... <laughs> uh, so, ZZ and uh, Arana uh, and Obed have arrived around the same time now? Yeah, like you guys were walking up to them. And gotcha. so you guys meet up right around here after that conversation. And so I say, when I see them, I'm like, ah, oh, I know you all are, uh, I've seen firsthand how quick you guys are with a blade and, you know, a stinging spell. Um, I, and I kind of just go in a few sentences say that, you know, I've, there's a dwarven merchant here that's, looks like she is in need of, uh, protection. I think she said, um, that, uh. You know, I, there's work to be done, and I need a, a team to join me. And, you know, there's probably coin in it for everyone involved, if anyone's interested. What kind of wares does she sell? Um, I kind of stop in my tracks and realize, oh, I don't know. I didn't ask her. Um, <laughs> Was she... How were how her manners? She seemed very pleasant and kind, I think. Um, she seemed distracted and distraught. Um, and I do like, I kind of say it's almost in a field, like a way, like I just want, I both want to help her, but also I want like, basically I want to become famous. <laughs> like, it's like, she seems nice enough, but also like, this seems like a way for me to, you know, I want to get myself known in this town. I kind of like allude to that. I have no issues with helping her. I'd rather help her than someone that violently assaulted me. <laughs> and I also say that, like, you know, she told me that she'll be in the, in that, uh, uh, in for a few days. Um, so I just kind of ask, like, everyone, like, do you want to, we could meet anytime in the next few days if you're, so I'm kind of asking everyone individually, like, when getting a little timetable going on. Like, are we, you know, shall we meet tomorrow or a couple days from now? Well, where are you staying? Uh, I point up to the uh, Kelvin's comfort. Well, that is also where we are staying. Oh, well, that's convenient then as I clasp my hands and rub them. For now, should we, uh, I know the area, there's a good market square if anyone needs to, uh, re-up anything that they have in inventory or needs uh, before we try and uh, relax for the day. And also, if I may say out of character that, I mean, I haven't heard anything about the, uh, what's his name? 
I already forget. Uh, 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 Reardon. Um, so I don't, I mean. You don't know anything about any other possible jobs, so you probably would have said something in regards to what Obed said. Um, Because Obed often offhandedly said, well, she sounds much more pleasant to deal with than that other. Oh, yeah, that's true. Right, than the the man that. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did say that. So I do follow up just kind of asking, like, who you're talking about, and I kind of want to get the gist of the conversation that happened up the road. There was a rogue reared in who almost killed me after our ordeal with the Yeti, knocking me down some kind of apothecary and asked us to uh, help him out, and I was willing to do so because Levi and, and ZZ were on their way, but I'd rather help someone with better manners. When I hear you, when I hear about you getting battered by that apothecary owner, I'm like, I whistle like, whoo, and I thought I got it bad as I'm like holding all my gaping wounds. <laughs> Make an insight check. Me? Yes. Um, you, as you say that, uh, Levi, you read through the lie uh, that Obed had been saying. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um and uh like you look him up and down and he does not look hurt at all in fact he he doesn't look like he even got scuffed up other than like the light snow that still seems frosted in his hair from when he buried his head in the snow outside gotcha i don't really say anything about it but i just know it and kind of inquire to myself like "Hmm, i wonder what he is why he wants to give this air of being weaker than he actually is or something along those lines right well Slim really does need to be set on a different path. It, as, a, as a shop owner, I can completely understand why Reardon would be so upset to be jilted on a contract when you've paid good money to watch after your shop. But you've only gotten one side of that story. You don't know what Slim was doing during the attack. Nor do you, Arana. That is true. Slim may not be the bad person in this, but I know well, that Re- Reardon was kind of... He was very rude to us. Well, that is why we will find out most what was happening at this north look. Mm, I, as I see further opportunity, uh, I ask if you uh, would like... you know, Would you like me, for Orion and I, to help out in this endeavor? I'm sure yes. we could be... Do you happen to know where north look is? I'm not um, interested in that. Mm. I assume not. I assume Orion does. Yeah. As I look at him. That's what I was saying. For now, we can go to the market square. It's on the way. We can see if there is anything of interest. Uh, you know, catch up. I had to use some of my uh, supplies when that attack. Okay. That sounds good. Then I kind of just make note with everyone or make sure that... We all agree that after we tend to this, that we meet the Dwarven Merchant in Kelvin's Comfort, assuming there's time. We may want to rest before all of that, but again, that's me worrying about you. Yeah, I think to myself, that actually sounds good. How about I meet you all in the North Look tonight? No. Okay, I decide to (laughs) go with you. (laughs) Just kind of like... I grin and bear it and get going. I'm already walking towards the market because I'm wondering if there's any booksellers or any curiosity shops. Yes, let's see this market. I run to catch up. the way. Sounds good. And lo, we described ourselves walking. And so you are walk. you all heading to the market, I guess, is what I'm asking. We're all like, yeah. We're yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sure. I have no problem with that. What's wrong, Arana? nothing i'm just trying to stay in character Um, (laughs) it's not easy for me as you make your way to the market square the first thing that comes apparent is the sight of several merchants um throwing up various wares um some of which you had never seen before as well as a couple of stalls that seem to be uh very apparent to you something else that stands out to you is this lone barbarian um, strapped to what looks like a pole out in the middle with a small shrine off to the side of him 
and uh, the barbarian is apparently naked and very like he looks cold and uh, looks like he's been there for quite a while and you see several uh, townspeople walking by looking at him in disgust a handful of kids that are in the area seem to like throw like vegetables at him like that like you don't know what he did or what's going on but there's this half basically naked man about to succumb to um, weather Hmm. That is some rough trade. <laughs> I, uh, kind of trod up to catch up to one of the families that's, like, kind of, I assume, in front of us. And, you know, ask, like, who is that? Uh, so you just kind of grab a random passerby, essentially? <laughs> I was going to ask look, Ryan. <laughs> I look for someone who's, like, a specifically disgusted, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, and Orion, are you doing anything to uh, stop him, or are you just? Uh, no, I'll, because he's just talking with the family. He's just right? yeah, he's just I... grabbing somebody. Yep. Okay, so Levi's. Oh wait, no, him. I missed that. Did, did he grab someone? I guess he's he's have... walking up to a random group of passerby's families that seem particularly disgusted with uh this this uh tall uh rugged looking human. That seems strapped to a pole in the middle of the town square. He's got like this um, soft san sandish blue hair, or yeah, sandy yellow hair with uh, piercing blue eyes. And he looks like he's just stoically taking it all in. Um, but uh, as he sees people coming into the town that he doesn't recognize, you see him starting to plead for uh, help and assistance because, and he's doing it through like a very raspy voice, like he's barely audible. Um, Levi, as you approach a family um, that seems to be walking by and looking and spitting in his general direction, um, what do you say? I just ask, like, who is that up on the pole? And I don't introduce myself or anything. Right. I'm just like, who's you, that? You just you hear like the father um, look at him. He's like, stupid bloody barbarians moving in on our turf, coming in here stealing shit and just like. They're not looking at you really, and you just hear like you hear the muttering. They kind of ignore you outright, and you mm. just hear the mutterings as they kind of keep. And they, like the the wife, seems to grab the kids and pull them closer as they see you and fucking new people. It's all you guys' faults, and they just keep on rock walking. And I kind of like uh, whether it be hopefully with them or someone else, I kind of mirror this disgust and yeah, like fake. I'm like pretending to be disgusted, and I'm like, ugh, what did that? damn barbarian steel um and generally speaking you don't really get a lot of information um as you go from person to person kind of trying to mirror and and, and do this um mm -hmm. but what you get the general gist is is that he seems to have stolen something from someone um you get a very very few people who feel like he's being falsely accused mm -hmm. and uh, the other recurring thing you hear a lot of is uh praise be uh oral or Aurel. I love Aurel. What? Uh -huh. Um. Do, <laughs> do I reckon? Do I recognize him at all? Uh, should I do an inside check to see if is it inside or is it uh, perception? Uh, for yeah, because I was gonna ask Orion as easy, you know, what I reckon... what constitutes this sort of punishment? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I was gonna see if I could rack my memory on on who what kind of is. happening to. Yeah. Um, I know who Oral is. Uh, and I, anybody I who or has religion can make uh, religion. Uh, um, can make a religion and I, check. I, I, I just want to add, after hearing this from people, I do come back to the group and tell them, you know, everything I've heard about some people saying he seems to be falsely accused, he stole something, praise be to Oral. Well done. Okay, okay. Because you do notice there is a small shrine um, that seems to be to Oral. Um, what you all kind of gather... Um, you're not like other than possibly ZZ aren't really um, the uh, the book type. I know like Obed, you've definitely read a lot of books, but Arana, you're not really like familiar with a lot of the gods. But what you do know is that Auril is generally considered like one of the common names that she's been given is uh, the Frost Maiden. She's tied to winter and um, like generally winter death and um 
um, harsh weather and a lot of people especially up here in ten towns tend to praise or give worship to her in the hopes of a of lightening the potential for a bad winter would um, I know her alignment with my deity uh no she you're not 100 <laughs> percent sure that was not something that was discussed in regards to uh things in the in the um in the village, in the village yeah zz okay. you particularly know that Aril is somebody who typically is um overshadowed by um oh, what's the other god it's not helm there's another god i think it's um I can't think of the name of the god. There's another god that oversees, basically, and she's like a, an undershadow. He, this one god, oversees all of all the elements and all the seasons as a nature, a god to nature, and the harshness that is nature. And Aril uh, is specifically somebody who normally is subservient. So for the winters to be so harsh up here, something seems to be off. And based on recent um, transgressions and things you've heard up in Neverwinter about these these chosen, it's leading you to believe that there might be something else at foot here. And specifically, Orion, what you know is that this is this particular individual appears to be one of the ragged tribe. You're not sure which tribe he is. This is nor this is not something that is typical. Um, people mm. are not normally just paraded out and basically um, submitted to the elements to be killed by the elements. Something else seems like it's going on here. This is not something you're used to seeing. In fact, something that you, you're all noticing is that you, um, besides the fact that the weather, like Orion, for you, this is colder than usual. Winter oh, normally nice. doesn't onset this fast, and it also doesn't normally hit this hard. So for something, something's going on in this town that's and in this area in Icewind Dale in total, that seems off. Um, and Obed, um, you hear in your mind uh, the whispering of this voice uh, saying, um, "You're on the right path. This, this is where you need to be. She is a frosty one." I'm kind of you, twitching a little bit. Yeah, and you hear, hear uh, this. yeah, and you hear something along the lines of, "Keep your wits about you." Uh, so what you all gather, though, is that this barbarian has been tied up here for some crime, whether he committed it or not. You're not sure, and it feels like the punishment doesn't match possibly whatever the crime was, like. Typically, when somebody steals, they get in prison, they get, you know, they get fined, they get jail time. Um, depending on the severity or the town, they sometimes, you know, they could possibly lose a hand or a finger for thieving. But hearing that this is a guy who stole something, something seems off. And he definitely looks was... like he's not going to survive the night. I'm wondering if it was like a, a physical item that was stolen or something less tangible um that's just in my that's my thought um are there any oh, i'm sorry oh just i'm gonna start making my way towards him to try and just like hear what he's saying i guess like if, he, if he's because he's he seemed like he perked up so i'm just trying to listen to what he's saying yeah i'm gonna come too are there guards around uh, yeah, there are a couple of town guards. Uh, they're standing watch over the square. Obviously, if people try to steal or something, they're right there. Could I go speak to one of the guards? Yeah. Um, you get up to one of the guards, and uh, he kind of looks at you and says, Well, you're clearly new. What do you want? Um, the guy tied to the pole I understand he stole something could you tell me what he stole uh, I don't know all the details you'd have to talk to uh, Sheriff Markham but uh, from what I understand he stole from one of the ladies uh, of the town who owns a uh, clo a, cl a bolt of cloth like a cloth store I don't know mm -hmm. fabric store whatever you want to call it oh uh, and he got caught red handed and uh, Sheriff Markham said that he needed to be uh he, he basically catered to the people who said that they wanted to see him freeze for this. 
crime. Oh, okay. I was. My next question was going to be. Oh, sorry. My next question was going to be. <laughs> if, <laughs> my next question was going to be if he was just being kept alive for torture, or if he was being slowly left there to die. So you slowly answered that as well. Yep. Okay. Is that all. Thank you. Yes, that's all. Thank you very much. And I'm going to go back and relay what I learned. Yep. Mm -hmm. I ask I if anyone like... knows. So yeah, go for it. No, go for it. I just want to use my divine sense to see if he's evil or not. Ooh. Do you need that posted? Um, uh, no. As you emanate and get within distance, uh, knowing the range of which your spell or your ability can affect, um, you walk within range of him, and you get no emanations in this town at Got all. <laughs> Well, within 60 feet. Well, yeah, within this square, you don't necessarily hear or see anything. Got it. Well, he's not evil, whatever mm -hmm. he's done. He was caught seems... red-handed. That seems, you know, guilty. But is, everyone... him, is he saying anything still, or is he just kind so of... So as you get closer, yeah. sorry, yeah, as you got closer, you hear him saying stuff like, um, I didn't, I didn't do it. It's not, it's not my fault. They framed me. I don't know what I did to these people, but they're, they're blaming me for this weather, this cold. Came here for tri for help. Insight. <laughs> when when applicable. Yeah, go for it. Roll an insight check. Oh, okay. Normal insight. 20. Mm -hmm. uh, from what you gather, uh, he doesn't seem to be... It's like he has no reason to lie. Um... He, I mean, he, I see he's being like, he's being left here, but to basically die, but he doesn't give you the sense of somebody who's generally dishonest. In fact, he doesn't even look like he's generally good at being dishonest. Um, and based on his app, like his build and stuff, he definitely looks like a warrior type. Um, ZZ will say, well, I for one believe him, and we cannot let leave this person here to die. And it's gonna look at Arana. <laughs> I need proof that he's innocent if you want my help. So do I? That, do uh, I over? Oh, I was just gonna ask. Do I overhear those two saying this, or not necessarily? Do I hear you guys say this stuff? I mean, about helping out. Yeah, I would have too. I mean, they're okay, not. They're not, not be, no, um, none of you guys are. You guys are kind of all intermingling. I'm not. I'm assuming you're all in a it. rough space of each other. You're yeah, not. Okay. You're. You're all doing your own things, trying to kill it, gather information in the space, but you're not. Okay, I don't yeah. have to be. That, yeah, it's okay. not like you have um, to sit there and go like, "Oh, okay, I just went over and talked to these guards, guys, and this is what they had to say." Unless you absolutely want to role play that, I'm assuming that you guys are all talking to each other. Um, okay. and intermingling the information so that you guys can understand uh, what's happening here. Okay, ZZ can... would like to size up the guards. <laughs> and Bye something up. I'd say that I could I could easily run distraction if you guys want that for the guards. ZZ, go ahead and roll an insight check. <laughs> ZZ, what's your, uh, what's your alignment? Fail. They look like they could beat the ever-living crap out of all of you, especially Levi right now, being as hurt as he is. Um, I am a neutral alignment. Neutral alignment, but what's what's your overriding? Are you lawful, chaotic, good? Oh, it's true neutral. True neutral. Okay, interesting. Um, do I have anyone who's lawful in this na in this group? I'm Me. lawful neutral. I'm lawful. Yeah, lawful neutral. Lawful. Okay. Um, in terms of in terms of law. Um, lawful neutral you, in general like any of you guys that have like a semi code of honor or code of yeah. ethics understand that what's happening here is exceedingly wrong and not right but there's also a chain that you can try and tug on should yeah. you want to understand how to possibly get him free so yeah you, I was going to suggest this like yeah. I start to see signs and I know Levi even though I'm not lawful but I'm, I'm on the good uh, neutral is that I, he's still the the part that I can I'm concerned about. So 
to me, uh, now in character, I would say, well, we're still not... In, I see where you guys are starting to think and size up, but again, Levi is in no shape to do anything. Let's talk to the sheriff and see if we can't find out more about this. Because if this man has been found guilty, he should have an opportunity to for a better path, not just slain. I just so come and agree. Manner. What? The, we, we can't appoint ourselves to be judge and jury. Why don't we ask the sheriff about this man before we do anything rash? Sounds good I to me. I will walk up to the barbarian. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I will put my hands on either side of his face, and I will push in my last two divine hands. Okay. Uh, um, healing. And you. I walk away. <laughs> okay, Rana. Zizi, you uh, you put your hands on either side of his face, and you watch as the divine glow leaves your body and uh, leaves your hands into his body, and you watch as the warmth washes over him, and you see just the briefest moment of respite for him as he as this gentleman uh, he says. <sighs> Thank you. My name is Hengar. If I should not make this, please return to the tribe of the elk. And um, he starts to cough again, and the voice's raspiness starts to come back. It seems like whatever whatever you did helped, but it's not going to stop the inevitable, unless you guys do something to do something about it. I look at I look around to see if the guard saw this. Should I roll perception or? Uh, you look around, Obed, and you notice the guards see it, but they don't like short of you guys trying to cut him free. Uh, don't seem to care. Uh, roll a perception check though. Go ahead. Oh, ZZ has a plan. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Obed, uh, as you look around, um, let's see here. Give me one second. Where's my, where's my character sheet? There it is. Uh, you look around, um, and for a second you thought you saw something, but it seems to have been fleeting, whatever it was, and it disappears from your sight. So something I, if we want to do something quickly, I noticed that like he doesn't seem to be, he still seems to be in bad shape, and I say that you know, I usually, I'm very you know accustomed to running sleight of hand kind of gambits and like tricks in streets and like i'd be happy to kind of position myself in a way to like kind of get the guards attention if you guys want to try and cut him down we will go and speak to this um whatever his name was the sheriff Sheriff Sheriff. okay um let's go and orion did you see the message uh yeah okay Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, actually, no. I saw the early one. Sorry. Uh-uh. Okay. So no. I just wasn't sure if you. I was like, I was waiting for you to chime up, and then you didn't. And I was like, oh, I better make sure he saw uh, what no. I typed. No. Uh, <laughs> I can Uh, okay. Actually, I'm gonna say uh to the team that it was like actually, if the sheriff is gonna just always rule, he probably already has his bias. We might need to go over his head. Uh, I know in this town, I believe there's a uh, Devessa. Uh, she's the speaker for the town. Uh, let's go check in. Did you say Alessa? Duvessa. D-U-V-E-S-S-A. Um, ah. And you kind of know where the council hall is, which is where she would be this time of day. It's around 2 p.m. now. Um, as you guys have kind of milled about, asking all these questions, talking to various villagers. Um, was there anything in particular that like, so, Arana, you walked away. Did you walk to go to Kelvin's Comfort, or what are you doing? No, no, no. I just walked away to get away from, like, to not be part of... Possible uh, uprising? Yeah. <laughs> okay, just checking. I was ready. <laughs> See, it's it's all like, I'm going to fucking miss every hit, but be the only one who doesn't get hurt. <laughs> I was ready to die in the middle of this market square, I'll tell you that right now. Um. So, uh, you guys no, follow behind... I would have completely yeah you follow behind orion and ryan you kind of lead him through some of the network but you mainly stick to the main road till you get to about here um knowing a couple of faster routes and stuff and you lead them all the way down to where you know the council hall is 
And as you guys approach the council hall, um, you see what looks like a very lavishly dressed um, man walk out with what looks like a tall black staff. Uh, and he's wearing what looks like fine robes cut from fine silks and things like that and wearing a very nice fur with a white shawl almost and he kind of looks at you and sticks his nose up in the air a little bit and turns his face and walks away um, as you make your way in to the council hall you see before you a small table and what looks like uh, the speaker of the house or speaker of Bryn Shander standing before you and give me one second. Let's see here. So before you, you see. Uh, where is it's down here? You see a woman that looks like this. Uh, she's fairly attractive, pretty young by standards, um, especially Orion. You're familiar with a lot of the speakers of the various towns. And Duvesa is one of the youngest and actually one of the first female ones to ever uh, wear the title of speaker in one of the ten towns. Um, but she sees you all and uh, greets you warmly and says, can, can I help any of you? What What is it that you all need? And uh, I guess I'll speak up first and I'll be, Duvesa, what's, what's going on? There's... Uh, it's not usually the punishment for people in uh, the market to die of frost. What's what's happening? What's changed since I've last been here? Orion, oh, it's been a while. Um, yes. His name is Hengar. Apparently he stole a bolt of cloth from uh, some woman. Uh, give me a second. And she, you see her rifling through uh, some papers. And let me see. Fine. Thing. Is it Hagar? Hengar. And Hengar. Hengar. Yeah, so it's H E N G A R. Um and she says that uh the uh the accuser for him is a merchant named Brianna Alcott. Um she's the store she's it sells wools and linens and sewing supplies and we're not really sure why a barbarian of one of the ragged tribes, especially the tribe of the elk, one of the largest tribes, would bother stealing anything. I I don't want this to ruin our relationships with the ragged tribes. We have such a good peace running. Um, and you can see genuine concern crossing Duvessa's face as she didn't agree with what Markham did, but she also, like, she can't... Something else is happening in this town that's causing her to be a little bit more um, subdued. Uh, Orion, you're noticing that from her. Mm, gotcha. I want Perhaps to... Oh. Brianne Elcott could benefit from some coin, perchance? I, to be honest, it, to be honest, her story changed so many times every time that she was questioned. It, it's unlikely that that they, uh, something else is going on. I, I don't want this to turn into a war, um, Orion. First, how can, uh, and I'll kind of say, you know, you know, you've heard stories. I, I care about the people. I want, I want these towns in this area to be safe. So how can we help? There must be someone behind the shadows that you must be aware of that's maybe turning this sleight of hand. Possibly. I I don't know for sure, but I believe it has something to do with the followers of Auril. To be honest, I am willing to pardon him under terms of banishment that he never be allowed to return to Bryn Shander. I can do this, but that is the extent of what I can and am able to do at this time. Well, giving a thief... A chance at redemption is better than dealing with continuing to have to bow down to people's bloodlust. I'm sorry, and your name is? I am Zizi. Mm. Yes, Zizi, I agree. And I don't necessarily like to cow down to thieves and killers and murderers. 
and cultists. But the fact of the fact is, is that I'm under strenuous times here, and I have other pressing problems. However, I wish this not to be one. If you guys, if you all, you and your friends here, Ryan, if you could take Hengar out of the town and see to it that he is never to return here, that would be greatly appreciated. We could do this. However, we do have pressing matters to settle today. Is it... Is it within your means to hold Hangar overnight in a cell? Um, and she looks to uh, you, ZZ, and you see um, this crestfallen look of I wish that I could short of him leaving immediately. Well, and I, I pipe in in the back. Um, I mean, should we should we make it appear, you know, try and appear that he is being, you know, taken away to be killed or something like that to try and put on? Or do you think, you know, whoever, basically whoever, uh, whoever wants this person, whoever wants Haggard dead, should we let that person believe it and like kind of take him away sneakily or should it be known that he's being banished? Levi, you're always where mischievous, aren't you? Uh, if they believe he's dead, that will still create quite a war. Hmm. I, it's easy. I, I have the doubt that I need to help. Mm hmm. You are probably right, Orion. Do you know what I mean by that? No. Yeah. I. You say that again. Um. <laughs> she's. She's like. I have the doubts now. I'm willing to help. Oh, I heard I have the doubts that I need to help. And I was like, uh, yeah. that's fair too. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I can submit a letter. I can give you a letter of pardon that you could then show to the guards in the market square that are watching over him to make sure that his sentence is carried out. This would gain him passage, his items returned that he came to town with. So long as he left, short of his weapons. Then we okay. will carry this out by before the day is done and then attend to our matters afterwards. Yep. And you watch... Provided, hopefully, he can make his way out by himself. Right. right. And you see... Um, you see uh, Devesa lift her hand and wave over, and, like, an attendant that's off in the side of this area comes over with what looks like a uh, piece of scroll, and she unrolls it, and you see her draw something on it, um, writing out what, what you would assume is the pardon, and then putting a wax seal on the inside. That's her mark and then rolling up the scroll and then putting another wax seal on the outside to mark the scroll as sealed and then hands it to Orion. Did we get a look at what was being written or could we not really see? Uh, make a perception check. You care to know. Sixteen. So you... Let's see here. Obed, you know that... Devesa wrote out something specific, um, but it seems more like loose scrawl and mostly saying things along the lines of uh, Hengar's punishment and crime will be committed to that of pu of banishment from Bryn Shander and will no longer be allowed entry within the towns upon pain of death, essentially is what you the gist of what you got from the letter she wrote. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, and as you guys take the note, Devesa looks to all of you and says, Please, I do not want to go to war with the Ragged Tribes upon everything else that's been dealing, being going on here. And um, she hands you the letter, Orion. You take the letter, and as you guys are making your way out, um, that Do we have Hingar's things to take to him? Uh, I think so that's sorry. with him over there. I oh, think okay. that's who are going to pick it up over yeah. there. I think that's you would head to... Uh, you would actually head to the town hall, which is where, um, and she would have told you this. She would have expressed the town hall because that's where Sheriff Markham is, and that's mm. where his goods are, like his stuff. Uh, um, but she basically Z says, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, once we leave, ZZ will go and make sure nothing happens to Hagar while everyone goes to the town hall and grab the rest of the stuff. So okay. I'll functionally take myself out of the rest of the party experience to go. Okay. So as you all set out from the council hall, uh, 
ZZ making his way to the Market Square, Arana, Levi, Obed, and Orion making their way to Town Hall to collect Hengar's things. That is where we're going to go ahead and call tonight's session. Uh, stuff. I want to go ahead and thank everybody for tuning in. Those of you that watched, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I would like to thank all of my players for what was one of the best three-hour sessions I've had in a while. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and st stick tuned because we're going to be back in two weeks to see what happens with everybody. Till then. Yeah. Later. <laughs>